if it's your Zoom line. Uh, um, no, it's just fine. No, he's, he knows how to do this. She does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is all part of your transparency thing, is making sure everything's recorded, right? That's right. Uh, we yeah. can publish Ida as videos or as transcripts. Um, uh -huh. it's mod the modality is we can determine it after the conversation. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, just curious if you had a chance to look over the 10 pages of stuff I sent, I sent to you. Yeah, I did. Uh, you did? I also followed every link. To <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I don't know how you... You do it. I can't quite picture. I know you had this interviewer ask you, what are your days like? And you said, it depends on what day. <laughs> mm. But I don't know. Okay. And so this is a Friday. I, I don't have yeah. to go to the, the cabinet um, office. Um, so huh. time structure wise, I have six hours for this conversation. Um, but I understand it's late for you uh, in the day. So I'm not yeah. saying that we have to, to do six hours. <laughs> well, maybe we will. Maybe I'll just get to bed really late. I don't know. We will see. Okay. <clears throat> and I realized after I wrote, finished writing the stuff that I sent to you, sorting out all these notes, which I've been doing for several days now, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I sort of summarized in my head, you know, the story of the, the wise men and the elephant, you know, who are feeling some feeling the leg of the elephant, some feeling that's. I feel like v Taiwan. I'm 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 looking through these different lenses of different people who are reporting on it, and I don't know what the elephant looks like myself, you know. So I'm curious where mm -hmm. you would go if you wanted to go through it step by step, or you just sort of see the general. At first, I don't quite know what's going on. I would love to hear. I, I would like to interject something small, uh, mm -hmm. which is, I find it usually helps to define a purpose for a call at the beginning. It helps mm -hmm. navigate it. I'm not going to define the purpose I am <sighs> writing alone, but if the two of you could get to a shared purpose, I think the call will be. Okay, and this is when we bring out the whiteboard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah in, in your 10 page document, there is actually already quite some uh, purposes. Uh, and then there is also um, your perspective, right? Is to A, connecting as people mm -hmm. uh, and as change agents, catalysts, whatever, channels. Um, and B, to go into the function, the process, and logic, not necessarily in that order of each I one. Um, um, I still want to repeat my question yes. because this is what is proposed to do. Uh -huh. But the purpose is what is what is the hope that doing these things will accomplish? Mm hmm. Like the end point? Yeah. If this is a successful meeting, what will you each have gotten from it? Mm, I will know the two of you more. That's the connect part. I'll perhaps ask you to share some ideas and life stories, and that's sufficient for me. Um, supposedly, you will understand more the philosophy, um, the logic that led to V Taiwan, and so learning, uh, satisfying curiosity, uh, I think would be a mutual success factor. I can't think of anything else right now. Mm -hmm. Tom, do you have something of yours? Um, that describes it. It's based on things that I was that I wrote earlier. I don't have all these distinctions made as to you know, purpose and what I want to do and the rest. So. But yes, I would, uh, I would love to have a sense of connection and reality. I feel like I already have uh, some connection to Audrey from um, interviews, reading and listening to interviews uh, in terms of your past, Audrey. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I know there's more. <laughs> mm -hmm. It goes on forever. Lives are fractal. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but I am... Uh, 
I there's a way where my my an underlying need regarding the um, v Taiwan is a uh, uh, a sense that I started out reading a couple of articles and thinking I kind of got it and got all excited. And then the more I read, the more complex it got, and it was harder to to uh, feel like I either knew or could know. So I'm interested in having a bit more of a landing place because I want to talk about it. I want to think about it. I want to uh, <clears throat> to write about it because uh, it feels, each little piece that I see feels like major breakthrough and that it has mm -hmm. many tendrils into my thinking and my work. And mm -hmm. I would like to, uh, I would like to share it and I don't feel I can share it or be articulate about it at this stage. Everything I say feels like a, an oversimplification, a radical oversimplification. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So share with, um, simplicity but not oversimplifying um, yeah so, okay. the simplicity the simplicity on the other side of complexity instead of the simplicity on this side of complexity <laughs> that's exactly right so with the the right the right kind of simplicity let's call it positive simplicity okay right. so something like that right okay so um is that um sufficiently purposeful it is to me so mm -hmm. i'm fine okay right so um so let's um if, if the idea is to find a landing place um i will start by describing v taiwan as i see it um and then um perhaps we can explore any and each of the ten drills um such as the bugs or challenges that you uh, brought up, as well as the connection to other methodologies. Okay. V Taiwan, uh, simply put, um, is a, is a, uh, it's a, um, and, and this, this word um, pronounced K-E-N-G uh, in the first um, tone, uh, it's it's kind of core of of what this is about. Um, literally, it's translated as a, a variously a gap or a hole or a crate, right? It evokes the image of something that's bumpy in the road that um, is below um, the surface, like this shape. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is the word that we use in the Gov Zero movement. Um, and <clears throat> it's one of the three core concepts. Uh, it's people, uh, it's projects or gaps, and there's um, marathons or meetups or congregations, um, but it's pronounced song. And, and so, so this is the, one of the three main concepts. Um, the idea is that we discover um, projects or con, um, which are simply put just excuse for people to meet. Uh, and the meeting is simply an excuse to get to know people better. And the people are simply an excuse to find more projects. So um, it is a, re a, a recursive public, as some academics say, um, that um, really exists in a kind of co-intelligent <laughs> fashion uh, for, for people to just randomly show up and do things. So, so it's, it's very much just a moniker. And so as a Kung, as a Kung it leads to the the song or the meetups that is every Wednesday from roughly 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, with plenty of pizza and um, <laughs> there was some wine yesterday, uh, last 
this day. Um, there's also a lot of cooking involved, um, but mostly just people having a good time. Um, but uh, the people who went there are, again, from all the sectors. And we talk about as excuse for a meeting, um, how to deliberate uh, data integration, how to integrate government uh, data, open data, uh, with um, citizens' contributed data, like um, this air pollution um, sensors, which two thousands of them are built by the citizens. And so um, kind of is parallel to the government's legitimacy. Uh, and so how to integrate those different sources of truth um, to have our facts, uh, to have a reasonable discussion. And so, and whether we need a law for it, a special law for it, or special chapter on a certain law, like the Freedom of Information Act, or the um, Privacy Act, uh, or it could just be a set of regulations, and we send out rolling surveys to discuss stakeholders. And that's all done in the space and time of maybe three hours over the previous Wednesday. And we do that every Wednesday. So every Wednesday we do something different and the agenda is always set by the people who happens to be there. Uh, and there's some norms uh, such as making a transparent uh, note of what happened. So the next week it could be a completely different bunch of people, um, but they could carry on the work. Um, so, so that's how I see V Taiwan. It's just yeah. a, a excuse for people to meet every Wednesday <laughs> evening to have fun. <laughs> that certainly turns everything I'm thinking inside out, and I start from square zero. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, we, we we did all those things that you 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 saw reported abroad and so on. Uh huh. But, so the people but, who but, the people who are reporting had not had the benefit of this little talk and we're trying to, you know, land somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. we try to say, this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. Missing the essence, the internal essence of what you're doing and the motivational essence. And it feels like, I don't know to what extent that's cultural or that's you or whatever, but I'm, I have to, uh, either scramble or just sit back to um, move into that reality, into that paradigm, which I like the mm. sound of, and I wish I could be more in that, but it's, a, it's hyper new to me to think and feel that way as a form of participatory governance. I keep wanting to go, mm. well, does it this, and does it do that? And it's like, well, okay, this uh, push the reset button here. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I have yeah. a I have a clarifying question. Yes. Um, the way that I'm understanding it, the people that you're talking about are the people who maintain and sustain the and design and expand the platform, not the process of of uh, citizen participation. Correct. Mm, that depends on who who shows up, right? <laughs> if if a minister shows up, you get regulatory commitments. Um, if a, a political scientist shows up, you get new thesis or discourse. There's quite a few master um, thesis born out of hackathons like this. Um, if um, a powerful civil society organizer shows up, as was the case um, a few months ago, you get completely new campaigns. If you have people who would later become moderator of the National Forum of Judicial Reform, then you get to influence the process of the national judicial reform process. So, so, so it is <laughs> random. It's like an, Im an immersion incubator. It's a place where relationship and platform and ideas mutually influence. I guess you can say that. Um, so it is like an incubator. Physically, it takes certainly place in the social innovation lab uh, in Taipei, uh, and which is a national um, program to incubate social innovations of any kind. 
Um, so um, I think it it's helpful to say that um, before the 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. thing, uh, already I spent the entire day from 10 a.m. onward in the same building in my mm-hmm. office hour. And so anyone literally um, can can just show up. And by the way, this is how the space looks like. It is a lot of fun uh, <laughs> just by walking into this space. Um, I think this um, particular football thing is designed by people with Down syndrome who are who turn out to be better artists than we are um, in designing this sort of thing. And so um, in the social innovation and you, you have like markets of social enterprises. So this is um, my office. Uh, and you see here, the, the red ones are the days that I happen to be elsewhere. But otherwise, I'm all here uh, from 10 a.m. onwards every Wednesday. So people can just talk to me um, with their ideas as long as it's published trans- um, transparently. So um, what I'm trying to get at is that um, this space itself is the kind of place you're describing. And V Taiwan is just one of the, I don't know, 400 or so activities that takes place in this physical space that I think um, shares more of its spirit, but there's many other ones going on too. The Universal Basic Income Gathering also uh, is here and many other um, endeavors. There's a funny way that this space is at least as much platform or even more platform than the online space. Then, and they're sort of coexistent. The, the online space lives in the physical space and the physical space lives in the online space and the activities and thoughts flow between them. And it's like, it's like a um, meta open space conference <laughs> ongoing all the time or something like that. I don't know. I'm trying to find yes. with my existing knowledge yeah the 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 place itself uh, it was established um just i think six months ago or something and it was like completely ruined um uh, a year before and um we had a co-creation workshop the result of which was that we need five more co-creation workshops. So we uh, hold five co-creation workshops um, and every week uh, and talk with hundreds of social innovators. So um, the government really just provided a budget and a hardware, but how it need to be allocated is entirely co-designed. People said, we need a kitchen with proper oven and everything. And we get a kitchen and a cafe. People said we need a chef. We have a resident chef. People said that we need <laughs> two very large rooms with nothing in it but wireless connection. You get that. People said we need a basement so that we can have blind facilitators to lead the sighted people to show their vulnerabilities, dialogue in the dark. We have that. Um, they say the minister need to be here every Wednesday. We did that. So, so that's how the space came about. Hmm. Is there is there any kind of pre intentionality of any given person trying to bring another person there or establish a particular kind of discussion, or it is totally emergent in the moment. In my Wednesday office hour, we have people who are running for mayor uh, in the upcoming campaign at the end of year and trying to have a talk uh, and bring their own live streaming um, equipment to try to steer or harness um, this energy uh, for (laughs) his particular county. And we're fine with that. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there's many political forces, I guess, but they're, they're ephemeral. They're, they're not recurring. Um, what's, mm-hmm. what's recurring become part of the culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. So the culture is very uh, porous, malleable. Mm-hmm. It can mm-hmm. fluid it can absorb and eject things, and if mm-hmm. something absorbs and stays there, 
then mm-hmm. it starts participating in the process of shaping. In a That's kind of exactly like a re- right. Recursive shaping. Yes, so which is why we, we call ourselves a, a recursive public. Right. Hmm. So what is the relationship of the Paulist process hmm. to what's going on there because that's a that has a uh, that has a level of continuity to it at least part of it you know I'm I'm just curious how that that process unfolds and it, could it does it sometimes start and halfway through it just dissolves because nobody's interested in doing it anymore or what is, mm-hmm. what does it what does it look like yeah um, Pelis for us is a um, time saver. Um, it's easy to get people to commit two minutes of their time, especially over the internet. But even face-to-face, it's not not too hard. Everybody has two minutes of kindness. Um, 20 minutes, it's harder. Two hours, um, it really (laughs) requires some convincing. Um, Right? So um, for us to have a six-hour discussion, it means that we must both be enjoying this, right? because otherwise there's no point. Um, and so uh, facilitate us, uh, the, the rare wise souls, as you described, um, are usually saddled with so much work, um, work for good, I'm sure, but work, uh, so that if we say you don't have to manually sort through 4,000, 5,000 comments. We can have the crowd moderate themselves, uh, but in a transparent way. Uh, it can save you much time. Um, then it becomes attractive uh, to any facilitator who want to engage with thousands of people. But we don't use polis if we don't estimate there will be thousands of people. If there's just 20 people, we get much more high quality discussion face to face anyway. Um, it's only when it is a controversial or very popular topic that we anticipate thousands, tens of thousands mm. of people, then we use police because otherwise the facilitators burn out and we don't have much fun anymore. So, so that's, that's how we use or see police. But there is... So this, the, the energy for Polis comes totally from um, the grassroots in this space. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the gov- is the government still committed to, I mean, there's, there, I'm beginning to see, okay, so there, there isn't a specific pattern of conversations afterward, the conversations that come after an exercise with polis is Mm -hmm. uh, are whatever various people have energy for and whoever can be pulled together for them. Uh, That's right. That's exactly right. And because all the data is open, you can't really misinterpret it much, right? Everybody else keeps everyone in balance in check. But if you have the energy to harness it in some way, uh, you're always welcome the government is bound um, to the degree that it need to answer uh, to the consensus items, but it could be done in a way that's entirely written. Um, it doesn't have to verbally defend itself, especially if it is a law rather than a regulation, then usually it is defended uh, in the parliament rather than um, in a citizen's Council. If it is a regulation, though, usually it leads to -to face-to-face discussions where we go through the points one by one. So, so it really, yeah, varies um, case by case. Uh huh. Okay. So the difference, the difference between uh, between Parliament's involvement and the minister's involvement is whether the implications of what you're doing it for involve law or regulation. That's right. Okay, that's clarifying. Um, 
Yeah, but in terms of the conversations afterwards, you know, a bunch of people go up to the people who run the, um, t- you know, talk in Taiwan activity and say, hey, we we have a couple of people we pulled together for a conversation. Uh, you Can you schedule that and let us know when it is so we can spread the word kind of thing? And that's mm-hmm. how it happens. That's right. Uh, the sense of trying to achieve representation of the population or representation of the full uh, full spectrum of stakeholders or whatever there isn't any expectation of that happening there's just if somebody whatever somebody has energy for that's how that's yeah how much of that is there and everybody is taking that into account and how they respond you know right so yes um <laughs> Usually, yeah, you have the the experts here who define the problem statement, right? You have a lot of controversies here. Um, Polis, I think, is really good at making sure the divergence in the first time uh, is fair in the sense that it, it doesn't skew any whichever way. So you really get a full spectrum um, of possible creativity and maybe it um, converges a little bit by way of crowd moderation but everything onward as you said um, usually people do a referendum here or do a <clears throat> you know um, a parliamentary vote here or um, a random council um, a sortition right uh, we, we, we did all this at this stage but but it is so so um, far removed from the initial expansion stage where is most of what huh. the V Taiwan effort is, um, so that we we don't care much really about the, the representativeness either in a statistics way or in a um, democratic representation kind of it's, way. It's we we care. A, a, it's closer to a brainstorm kind of. The way it'd be yeah. looked at is here we're here we're going to generate a whole pile of possibilities to sort of check out which ones seem to be attractive. That's exactly right. So okay. we we care about the the representation, right? The accurate presentation of the ideas as it's originally written. We don't try to synthesize too much. Um, so it is a representing of what people have originally thought. Uh, and we carry it through a accountability trail all the way to the final decision. But the methods used in the um, phases here, 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 and here are completely different for each case. And mm. in, in the second triangle, is it largely the conversational kind of different kinds of conversation are happening uh, mm-hmm. in an effort to get to something solid that's been through a more focused conversational process or seven seven different focused conversational processes, whatever. But the intention here is to uh, to start from whatever results have come out of the first yes, section that's, that's right. and then ex- newly expand from them in mm-hmm. new ways and then come to some conclusion. And where the, yes. the first part, where you have the question marks, uh-huh. what yes. is it? what is it that people are talking about where does that come from what's the articulation uh of that piece of the puzzle mm. Who, so do um, have the energy to create one and then they say we we yeah we we need at least two people right to have um <laughs> perspectives right so so yes if people uh, think that this is a something that has the potential of become something public, um, then they use mm-hmm. e-petition, for example, is a great example because if you have 5,000 people, there's bound to be at least five different perspectives in those 5,000 people. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is kind of predetermined huh. that if you send out invitation uh, of polis to tens of thousands of people, or counter petitioners, then you get something valuable. Right so, sometimes, out of it. so sometimes the petition 
activity is going on at the beginning and generates a polis activity. It's not necessarily directly to, it can be, but it's not necessarily directly. It, it, it can be uh, the, the triggering, the triggering um, threshold for using polis is simply that we anticipate there will be thousands of people. And that's whoever is organizing the use of polis. Anybody could organize polis, but it's not. Yes. It's it, the, in order to get enough people saying, yeah, let's use polis, you have to demonstrate to them that it's going to be worth, worth their while to do that. No, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And, and no. we have many other tools. It doesn't have to be polis. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand there's, and there are lots of, I mean, in the mm -hmm. chart, in the yeah. Collins chart, there were lots of, you know, over here yeah. we use this, over here we use this. I don't know That's all right. things, but I do get the sense. And his chart isn't like, this is how we do it all the time. His chart is more like, this is an example of how we would do it. Yeah, exactly. And, and for the next case, we have a completely different methodology if people all have a rough consensus about it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that's where the rough consensus comes in in terms of operationality. Mm -hmm. That there's, okay, and the rough consensus being a group of engineers who are talking about this, uh, the working group that they're talking about is in a sense mm -hmm. a group of people who are gathered together either online or in the space you showed us, and they're talking about whether they want to focus on this, that, or the other, and out of that comes the... Uh, and there are facilitators of that mm -hmm. who are like the chairman they're talking about in the that's right we have a few norms like the yeah. facilitator uh need to be neutral uh preferably not strongly affiliated with one of the sites of the stakeholders uh and that uh they're um at least fluent uh in translating the issue into common language that can include more people, but if they are not, we have people who can help. So um, it is more of a group effort than anything. Uh -huh. And the roles are not solid. People go into various roles depending on what they, their mixture of their skills and what they want to do at that time, or somebody mm -hmm. calls them up and says, hey, we need an X and come on down. Mm -hmm. uh, the level of self-organization, again, it's like, I, when I talked about the connection that we would have because of my experience on the Peace March and your Sunflower mm -hmm. Movement experience, and I go, mm -hmm. this really is, <laughs> this really is at this level of self-organization. It's like whatever shows up, whoever, sh you know, what is it that whoever shows up are the right people and whatever happens, the only thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, then, I am blown I, away. Anyway, go ahead, Nikki. I have a um, uh also, again, a clarifying question, uh, mm -hmm. which is, um, suppose there is an issue that it has a very sharp divide between urban and rural people. I'm just making it mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. um, the way that you describe everything, when I look at, when I imagine the typical participant, they don't look very rural to me. Mm -hmm. So um, I completely understand that it doesn't matter to have representative sample. All that matters is that the issues and perspectives are on the table. But mm -hmm. if there's a perspective that is wholly rural, how will it yeah. ever make it here? Okay. Um, there's many concrete cases there's one, um, I can talk about the helicopter case, which is a fascinating case. Um, it's about in the south of Taiwan, there's this little town called Hengchun. Uh, it's a very popular tourism place, um, but it's a small town in the south. There's about 8,000 petitions um, at a time for this place which has an airport that has been neglected for a very long time, for a few years. Uh, the petition says, we need to ask the Minister of Interior to deploy the Black Hawk helicopters 
to our airport to serve as ambulance cars, so that people who run into strokes or had a diving accident can get to a major hospital in Gaoshan here in time.、Um, and it is a, despite being a popular tourist upper、uh, tr- um, destination, there's no big hospital there. There really is nobody who can operate、um, a, a surgery、uh, for the brain、yeah. or anything like that. And the nearest large hospital that has the, both the equipment and the doctors are ninety minutes or a hundred minutes away. So people die because of this.、Uh, so it's a real problem.、Uh, and ambulance helicopters is not a unheard of idea.、Uh, and so yeah.、Um, They garnered support not because there's eight thousand people in that town, but because they, in their bed and breakfast, put up those signs that says, "Do you know what will happen if you have a diving accident? Here's this QR code. Bring out your phone, sign the petition before you check in our bed and breakfast."、Uh, and so there's grassroots mobilization that lead to one of the fastest petitions、uh, we ever. Said、uh, saw in the petition platform,、um, and because every month、um, we have participation officers in every ministry、um, who bring these kind of things to the table, and the Ministry of Interior's participation officer says we really don't have that many Black Hawk helicopters to spare, and we we're not sure that people with stroke are the best to be carried by helicopters anyway. Uh, but it's very difficult to convince people、uh, of that. So we have this regulation that says when there's multiple agencies who each consider other agencies to be responsible agencies for a petition, all of them become responsible agencies.、Mm. <laughs> so,、uh, yeah, I, I personally wrote that in. So. so <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's a snowballing <laughs> regulation.、Um, the the agency for Black Hawk says it's really the firefighting department's thing. They said no, it's the Ministry of Defense. They said no, it's the Ministry of Transportation and Communication because all they really want is a faster road, a highway. Um, the people in the Ministry of、um, Transportation said they don't really want a highway because that kills the tourism、uh, um, along the road. What they really want is a larger hospital. So it's the Ministry of、uh, Health and Welfare,、um, and so on. And so、um, we have this many agencies、um, finally become co-authoring agencies. And so we went to Hengchun. We we all. All the agencies that I you just saw went to Hengchun together,、uh, and we met with the petitioners who insist instead of the usual five counter signature、uh, representatives that they have ten different viewpoints. So they really need ten people,、uh, and so we have ten people each with a very different viewpoint on how to solve this quagmire. And so,、um, there's a video that I can play for you.、Um, let me quickly find it. Maybe it's just. We have a、minutes. saying here that what's what's everybody's responsibility is nobody's responsibility. And I said, exactly. You, you turned it right around. Right. You said what's nobody's responsibility is everybody's yes. responsibility. Yes. <laughs> right. So I started by saying anyone can join through live stream and through Slido, which is a way to ask questions. And this is our facilitator saying that we're here to solve a systematic problem, to effect systematic change, not to solve a one-shot issue.、Uh, here's she explaining where we are in the double diamond. We're done with the、um, expansion of possible opportunities, and we're now trying to delve into the feasibility into each one. But we will not make a decision right here. We're not at. The last quarter, and the ministries responsible for them will be responsible for the gray places. And this is our petitioner who feels very strongly for helicopters. 
Um, and everything they say, not just immediately transcribed, but also are mapped in a mind map that looks like this. So this is the Black Hawk operating uh, unit. Um, I think uh, he's a surgeon or something. Uh, I don't really know, uh, a senior officer. And to explain why, it's really not a very good idea. The, the blue one, uh, sorry, the green ones are the concerns that's raised. The yellow ones delves into the details of the concerns. The orange ones are the responses, initial response from ministries, and the blue ones are supporting facts. And so, and this is the town uh, representative, one of the counselors. Uh, and this is the head of the hospital, the largest hospital, which is rather small uh, in that town. Um, and from the Ministry of Health and Welfare, mm -hmm. uh, talking with the hospital people. And this is the county councilor, not the town councilor. Um, and here she is citing a fact that there really is zero uh, doctor who can perform this kind of surgery uh, in all the three small hospitals there. Um, and so we have an MP who is uh, voted. This is his district who sent his staff uh, to propose his ideas. This is a local lawyer and community organizer who have already gathered um, support and consolidated opinion of a particular faction. Uh, and the MP himself calls in from Taipei. Uh, and the Minister of Transport people are is trying to say that it won't make tourism and economy better if we have a highway. Uh, and uh, airport people explains about how they try to revitalize the airport. And there's many technical arguments about what kind of flights, what kind of uh, planes can be flew uh, on the airfield there. And so this is the local uh, county person. So we took easily more than four hours. If you include the pre-meetings and the follow-up clarifications, it's easily an entire day from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. officially, but it's actually much longer after the 2 p.m. Uh, and so we are reasonably sure we explored all the different solution paths and the uh, pros and cons uh, of each. And so the Ministry of Interior made a documentary, which the short version of which you just saw. And so finally, the insight here is whether people who are born there and when become surgeons and nurses will keep their heart there. What, what makes them go to urban places? What, what makes them not service their extended family there? And so it turns out that if we do deploy helicopters, more of them will, will just go away because they don't have anything to exercise their skill for. And so um, the rough consensus at that end of the day is that we need better dormitory. We need high-end equipment. We can fly people from the north to from the city areas to practice their skills here if necessary, so that we can fly doctors here instead of flying patients north. Uh, but at the end, we need to support their extended family, their education and so on, so they will want to uh, stay at this place. So um, <laughs> they allocated, um, I think I'm translating to US dollars in my mind. Um, let me make sure that I don't get the uh, magnitude um, incorrect, um, but yeah, um, so every Friday when we have this meeting, I bring this mind map uh, into um, the meeting with the Premier and other ministers with our portfolio the very next Monday. And this is anyway live stream, so the press are all over it. And so, yeah, we allocated at the end 10 million US dollars um, to build a large hospital there. And it's not that this is the solution that is proposed for the first time. No, it's been proposed like 10 years, but it's always in the utilitarian sense, not the most cost-effective solution. 
that we can demonstrate to the prime minister, we explore everything else. And none of it has the same consensus as this solution. So there's 10 million US dollars. And so, so, so it's now building the large hospital. So what I'm trying to get at is that first, we always go to the place. Um, and second, we return to the place. We make sure that when we have meetings like this, um, they're ordered in the sense that people know each other face to face. And then we follow up with meetings touring around Taiwan by connecting people, for example, in Huadian or in other South rural places here with 12 different ministries in Taipei. And this happens every other Tuesday. So we can follow up on what we have promised. The prime minister himself visits two counties or cities every week this way. And I'm uh, a more of a recurring round trip thing. And so over time, people get to know the ministry people from the central government more. And so we get to uh, more, mm, I would say, coordinated or uh, more focused conversation uh, every time I return to a particular place. Um, and so, yeah, we, we don't think urban and rural are essentially two places. If we systematically deploy projections, connected rooms, they might as well be the same place. And um, the Taipei video conferencing space is always the social innovation lab. So the senior executive who go into there are already in a more playful mood. Um, yeah, it is a long-winded answer, but I hope it answers your question. <laughs> It's a long wind that blows here. <laughs> That's, uh... Uh, what, I, what I'm hearing, I want to see if I understand the answer. What I'm hearing is that when there is any reason to believe, either because of the source of the petition or because of the nature of the issue, that there are specific populations that would be necessary to involve. Mm -hmm. then the design of how to bring people together will incorporate that consideration. Mm -hmm. And we'll put, again, the idea of representation first, right? Yes. Because their natural modality is not to travel 10 hours, five hours to Taipei and speak for 20 minutes. That's not very useful, yes. right? So the, so the natural way, if we think about representation is just to bring a 360 recorder and make everyone who can have a VR glass or something relive the experience of the town hall locally, which we did in the Penghu Islands. It's a very rural island. So um, the virtual reality immersive recording is really important because not everyone can travel there. So they are, they are experiencing it after it's happened, they're not in the midst. It's not a, the virtual reality is not a helping people be in the midst of the conversation while it's going on. Well, it's helping maybe 50 people, but, but yeah, the majority of people uh, did that after the fact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I'm, there's a funny way in which the pieces of this, I can easily see pieces of this being applied elsewhere, but it feels like the, the culture, the history, the subculture, your own personality and capacities, all of these add up to making this possible, functional, productive, uh, where it's happening now. Uh, the, you can always export Paul S., but it would be contained within some other structure, some other series of steps or motivations or whatever uh, mm -hmm. that yes. having the, you, you, to, to try and replicate it, you'd have to start with people who are in love with open space and, and, uh, and self-organization and each other, you know? Mm -hmm. And trying to find where that is, if you wanted to transplant the whole kind of thing you have, you would mm -hmm. have to transplant it through into that kind of soil. Uh, and hopefully there would be a uh, government that was responsive to that kind of activity. I don't, 
I don't know how I want to find such a place, but I'm sensing the foundations of it are not this process does that. So we're going to do this process. And so it really is grounded in the conversation among people who are interested in the topic, the process, the, each other, whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. it's true. I mean, I've, I've been in conversations talking about what is, what is an open space organization? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I've never seen anything remotely like this, but it's very recognizable, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in terms of the open space principles and spirit, you know. Um, I, I have a, a, a question if, if it's okay. Um, is it Tom? Yeah, right. I'm, I'm <laughs> still in, in, a, in the process of reorienting to figure out what else I want to ask? Because I'm, I'm recognize I'm I'm treading water in a much bigger sea than I thought. Mm. I'm looking for ground to stand. That's not what's going on. <laughs> um. So, I am. I like to think in terms of building blocks and principles. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a sense that the building blocks here are you know, specific platforms, specific experiences, um, you know, cumulative experience of different things that work in different contexts that you can then, you know, kind of like generalize and get little bits. Um, and m my guess is, oh, I'm sorry. And then there is design principles. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about at the meta level of design principles. Mm -hmm. um, um, let me say what I mean. Um, a core design principle that I am gleaning from this is use the natural and emergent strengths mm -hmm. of the culture and the people that are involved. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And in some other place, the same principle might result in a design that will be semi-top-down. Mm -hmm. In some other place, it might result in a design that is very organized where there are local circles that then send representatives to something else. If you apply that meta principle of what are the strengths of the local culture and the local people not mm -hmm. what did they do in taiwan and how can you do it here but mm -hmm. how did they go about figuring out what they could do and how mm -hmm. can we replicate the process of figuring out what to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i want to know if what i'm saying makes sense to you That's yes totally totally yes um, I, I will note that this is precisely how internet was was born. Was yes. born. Yeah, it is people initially are of a more academic and well connected to DARPA academic culture, uh, and gradually, yeah. including the telecom operators and the initial bunch of human computer interaction experts. And finally, um, academics of other disciplines, and then the general public. Um, and so, yeah, if you start the internet protocol with a different bunch of people, with the, the military people, mm -hmm. it will be very top down, even though technically it's the same internet protocol. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's like a mobile. You know, there are certain mobiles that only operate in one way, and there are certain other mobiles that if you pick this piece and you hang it from this piece, it looks a certain way. But if you pick this other piece and you hang it from there, it looks a different way, but it's the same building blocks. It changes. Yes. So relationship and capitalizing on, on local strengths and local sensibilities is paramount if mm -hmm. this thing is going to be um, extrapolated, can't be replicated, can't be exported, it can only be extrapolated, kind of like packaged into principles and building blocks, and then redeployed in some other place based mm -hmm. 
on the capacities that are in existence there. Am I making sense to you? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, the, the specific procedures or processes, as you said it, but uh, I prefer procedures. This seems uh, more lowercase. Um, the procedures, um, as you said, are like Lego blocks. You can take yeah. polis, you can take this real-time board, you can take Slido, there's many, many procedures, yeah. micro procedures that people can use to generally save their time, to reduce their risk and occasionally get more creative. Mm -hmm. and, and all these are good things, right? Uh, but um, the, the policies, and I mean it both in a written policy, like regulation kind of way, like I, I, I wrote many regulations that enable this structure without me having to maintain it by force, right? But also the cultural norms, that is a mirror of the local norm. Yeah. And uh, finally, um, the above the procedure and policies, um, you have the, the power structure. That mm -hmm. is um, what people recognize are influential uh, in their way of action. And, and for that, we can't export it. Right? We, we're, yeah. we're not, not um, some other more violent regimes. So, so we, we, we don't export democracy this way. So, so it's always buttoned up uh, in, in this fashion. It, it's true. I, and I think I understand what you're, you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, part of what occurs to me is the, when you, when you were talking, Mickey, was of a, uh, a pattern language, because a lot of the elements you're talking about are here's, here's a pattern, here's a dynamic that is an essential piece of the whole, but it will manifest differently in every place and every circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, and to have that level of abstraction that is not total abstraction, it's design abstraction. Mm -hmm. uh, saying you need a pillar to hold up the roof kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of thing. And, uh, but it feels like, again, since I'm, <laughs> I'm coming from looking at the, the whole world and where the whole world is headed and things are getting better and better and worse and worse, faster and faster simultaneously. And I would love mm -hmm. to enhance the better and better part to address mm -hmm. the worse and worse because it's, some of it's pretty hairy. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's not a matter of exporting per se, as we are going to export this full-blown car or this full-blown social system. Mm -hmm. But I try and go, what, what would allow or encourage this living, this kind of living system to sprout in other environments? You know, mm -hmm. and it's and there's a sense it's not so much it's like halfway it's sort of consultant, but it's a there's some kind of catalytic energy. There's a deep understanding of what's going on here, a sense of the patterns and the limitations to how one applies the patterns to real life situations. Mm -hmm. it's a, there's a sense of which it's a permaculture project on uh, mm -hmm. permaculture designer is there to be present with what the site and the life in the site is telling them and then dancing with the site and try this, try that, whatever. And you couldn't just read the book and apply it. You would have to see, first of all, is are the basics of what would be required? What are the fundamentals? There's something about the energy, the networks, the eagerness, the situation that would say this is a space within which this thing can grow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once that is identified, then people, the, ener the life energy of those people can dance with a uh, the catalytic consultant. It's not like take the training. It's like, let's try this and see what happens. Let's try that and see what happens. And the, the sensibilities, the discernment capacities of the catalyst uh, can be applied into this situation. They go, oh, have you thought about this? Or let's look at how this is unfolding. It's not going in the direction we thought it was going to go or whatever. There's some kind of dance going on there. And I would love to know 
how one would do that intentionally. That's why I can see your, when, when I said us as change agents, you know, transformational agents, you know, evolutionary agents, it's a very risky mm -hmm. language because mm. you're, you're not an agent per se when you're dancing. Agent has a little too much linearity in it. Mm. Uh, but there is a, do you know, do you know um, Nora Bateson's work? Nora Bateson. You know Gregory Bateson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this is Nora Bateson is his last daughter from okay. his last marriage. And she, she's uh, American, but based in Sweden. She has a Swedish husband. And she mm -hmm. is carrying on and extending Gregory's work. Okay. And she has created a new paradigm kind of based in a couple of key concepts. She's created a word called somathesy, mm -hmm. uh, which she defines as mutual learning in context. Mm -hmm. And her, her sense of what learning is, is not school learning. It's not necessarily progressive. It is a kind of responsiveness that leaves a trace, mm -hmm. you know, and that every part of life at every level of life, is mm -hmm. somathesy mm -hmm. and therefore each entity is in fact somathesy you know every mm -hmm. every one of our cells is interacting with every other cell blah 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 you know mm -hmm. and there's a funny way in which this is one of the most symesthetic mm. somathesy uh, symesthetic things that i have ever seen as an established practice mm -hmm. uh, there is constant context the, the responses are contextual it's not that and she's she has a thing she calls warm data labs which is different stations in a space where people can go to talk about what the topic looks like from that perspective and then move to another space and what does the topic look like from that perspective and sort of get a sense yeah she has trans contextuality is another one of her concepts mm -hmm. And it is very much you know, interrelationality would be another. The lens you look through is a context, as well as the history is the context, mm -hmm. situation is a context, all that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think of it, the energy of it is a dance energy. Uh, mm -hmm. And since conversation is one of the primary ways humans learn in context together mm -hmm. uh, to be able to art, be artists of conversation, artists mm -hmm. of the dance of meaning between us. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, it feels like there's, I'm trying to get Nora to think in terms of more in terms of social change than just theory. You know, I'm wanting to, uh, and this is, this is, I have to tell her about the video when we get the video finished. I have to go, look, check mm -hmm. out this video. This is, <laughs> this is more closer to what you're talking about as it applies in real life than anything mm -hmm. I've seen. And where do you go with that in mm -hmm. terms of how to, how to use nonlinear intentionality to dance with a system into more life? Uh, for that system, it feels that's what you've been doing. I mean, you're a, mm -hmm. you're a model for how one would play that game. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I hope it doesn't require that somebody in a couple hours can read 10 pages of weird stuff from some a totally different frame of reference <laughs> like you did. Mm -hmm. but that's a whole other skill on top of, on top of uh, this dancing capacity you have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to find, trying to find the, uh, the place to tread water, not to stand. <laughs> mm. Place to dance from. Anyway, Mickey, you're bubbling with something. Go for it. Um, I have a little tiny loop that I want to close about something from before, really <laughs> tiny, which mm -hmm. is, we're talking about this hospital. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you were saying that the hospital is not the most cost benefit Yes. Was not the most cost effective. And I want to challenge that mm -hmm. because I think that it is the most cost effective if you factor in the right costs. Uh -huh. that, that, that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I was saying that in our 
preliminary material from the factors that could be translated into dollar terms, it was evaluated as not most cost effective. Yes. Uh, but, but our deliberation was essential, I think, in establishing that um, the methodology was flawed. Uh, so I, I do agree with you. Okay, I, I just yeah. it, w it just felt important to to name it. It's mm -hmm. like how do you define cost? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's kind of like um, you know if you go back to basic science, the mm -hmm. definition of efficiency is the relationship between input and useful output. You want yes. to maximize the ratio um, mm -hmm. and in in modern capitalist culture it has been flattened into only one dimension of linear time so mm -hmm. the concept of efficiency has been uh, emptied of content and in the same mm -hmm. way cost has been emptied of content and is now one dimensional about money mm -hmm. that's all the, the, the thing that I was that Tom was accurate that I'm bubbling with is I'm, I'm, I learned this concept that I really like. I don't know who invented it or where it came from, but I'm sure you know of it. It's called adjacent possible. You know, this adjacent concept? possible. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking here we are, the three of us are talking and you are in Taiwan you are doing this thing. Tom and I are each doing our thing in a variety of ways and contexts and purposes. What unites us is something that we could conceivably try to define, but may not be necessary even. It's only important to recognize that there is something that is an intersection of our interests and purposes and personal predilections and all of that. And here we are. Might this be the seed of something virtual that is like the space that you have in the social innovation lab? <laughs> that was the thing that I was bubbling with. So, you know, not every week, but maybe you define um, once a week or roving time, because if you want to do it global, you know, it wouldn't be able to be the same time each mm -hmm. time and not the same people. But you, you rove the time and you open the platform and the first conversation is three people. And the second conversation, maybe those same three people and two others that they bring and the third conversation, the first three may not even be there. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm just taking the, the replication of your lab. <laughs> I am exactly applying the principle to what we have. Um, that the question that you're asking, Tom, you feel like you're treading water because it's like you are single, uh, individually trying to solve the problem of what of this can be transported, where, in what form. Who would support it? Who would be the stakeholders? You can't. I can't. Audrey can't. But if we open a conversation and think about what is the next immediate step, it's, it seems to me always important to have the largest vision, the most unrestrained largest vision, and the most concrete next step. Those are the two things most important. <laughs> Um, so that's that's what came to me. I'm curious, Audrey, if if that appeals. Well, um, Tom already knows that there uh, is a endeavor uh, from Jerry Mikowski uh, called Rex, that is a series of conversations that are structured more or less the way you you, you phrased it. I, I'm currently engaged in. Uh, for example, in the Digital 7, uh, it's seven countries, uh, each with a um, government digital service or a social innovation lab, and we are holding regular calls. Uh, so, yes. Uh, this I is with Jerry? It's, it's worthwhile. No, not with Jerry. These are no. two networks. Oh. But this is at a governmental level, so it, 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 it is less emergent than whoever shows up. 
I, I do agree. I do agree. So yes, if you set up a a time and a space, and uh, I mean, I can participate if it is Friday at this hour, then this week, the week afterward, and the week afterward. But maybe not for a couple of weeks afterwards. So I mean, and and we can certainly figure it out in more detail if we do meet in in Seattle. Uh, face to face, but no, I mean, this is April twenty eighth, Mickey. There's a chance to talk face to face in Seattle. Uh, who recharge my ear? Um, a second, but yeah, Tom can explain this. Right, right now, uh, right now, it's just Audrey is coming to the U.S. He's coming to the U.S. to talk to the Paulus people, and has potentially a lot of time available on the twenty eighth, and been looking yeah. at it, and if. I don't know if you want to drive all the way to Seattle. I can drive. I, the driving would be very complicated because I'm in Israel at that time. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's a, a little, a little impossible. Yeah. yeah. There's ways in which this fits. Uh, really well with some other things that I'm working on in some ways it doesn't fit and it's like it, again the <laughs> like the GPS's go recalibrate <laughs> uh, yeah there's a lot of yeah I'm I am definitely going to refer people to this video it feels like this video is a a starting place for all sorts of things that could happen if people watch it then they they have the shift in perspective that makes this either total mystery or compelling. Which video are you talking about? The one that's being made right, right. now. Oh, oh, the conversation we are having. Actor and actor. Yeah. And I, well, there's a piece of me that, in terms of getting to know each other better, that wants you, Mickey, to share your PhD project among many other things, but that feels like a, a major piece reflecting who you are in your core that uh, uh, you might she might really be interested in, or she might be interested in hearing. Um, I, I don't have any, any, I don't mind doing that. I'm not sure that is the thing that I would choose, but what, what I'm more drawn to is a very different level of question, mm -hmm. uh, which is I want to ask you, Audrey, um, is there any place where you're challenged and need support? So, um, can, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so, I didn't hear what you said, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was saying whether um, my sound is still uh, going through because I'm recharging the earphone. Um, so, um, I think I listed quite a few um, challenges, which I would like to go through uh, very quickly, like one minute each uh, at most, one by one, so that uh, we can identify both uh, the frames um, of which we're, we're talking about, as well as possible um, ways to, to collaborate uh, and so forth. I'm going to take a picture of my screen and project it. Um, so, right, so, so that's the challenges section. Um, so um, the first one, I think, already happened uh, in the Airbnb uh, case. The Airbnb case, the Airbnb company sent a letter to all its members in Taiwan, asking them to go to police and be Taiwan and support the legalization of Airbnb, basically turning itself as a mainstream media because it has so many members um, into campaigners. Much to their surprise, only one third of their constituents supported their position. The other two <laughs> has many other thoughts about Airbnb that they did not let Airbnb know because it was not 
an open questionnaire that Airbnb used to ask them. So um, I, I think this proves uh, one of the um, meta principles of emergence in that if you y- ask people only yes and no questions, you get into this hallucination that you have a constituency of people who said yes or people who voted for you last time. But, but they are people. And in a much more open, multi-way dialogue, they, they, they think, they all think the best campaign plan- planners collectively. And so I, I'm not that worried about a PR campaign. As long as they're drawn to the space that is reflective, people reflect, that's what they do. Uh, and so I think we're okay uh, with this. Um, bots are technically uh, capable of participating. But if they're only voting exactly the same way over and again, then on POTUS, they're just a single dot because the POTUS map accounts for diversity. The area of a group is how diverse its opinions are, not how many people they have. And so it will increase the number of people sharing that cluster. So you have a cluster here, a cluster here, a cluster here, and and this will read 20K, and this will read 200, and this will read 100. But it doesn't really matter. We don't even look at the numbers when interpreting a POLIS result across groups. We don't compare the the population of groups, so to speak, because all we want is the full spectrum of possibilities and overall resonance. And so while this is a challenge, and I will welcome any um, theoretical uh, support or mathematical support, I think we're doing okay uh, because the interface rewards diversity over numbers. Now, if bots come and are able to generate authentic, good, creative ideas. I So, you're answering the question in a different way from my intention. My intention was more almost personal, not personal, personal, but personal. Uh, um, and you're talking about the systems. Right, I'm talking about technical assistance or theoretical assistance. Yeah, I, don't, I, I wasn't talking about this. I was talking about, you know, like, really, what do you need? Oh, and okay. if, you, if you get worn out or you have somebody to talk to, whatever, something. Okay, I, I just had no, it, so, for example, you can say, I need technical assistance to solve certain challenges. Yes. Great, I know this is not something I can help you with. Uh, Do you see what I mean? It's like, what would support you? This is a beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. And I am also imagining that you sometimes have a, you know, like a lot of fear about what if this happened or what if that happened? I don't know how to deal with this. I have too much going on. I don't know who to talk. I don't even know. I'm just making it up. It can't can't all be going well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So where, where are you challenged? It's not... I'm, I'm asking you to shift realms, if you're willing. If you're not, it's fine. fine. No, 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 it's good, it's good. Um, I, I, I really just had lunch, so I'm fine. Um, and um, and, and the, the very fact that I can, with very short notice, schedule a six-hour meeting potentially with you says that I'm not busy at all, right? <laughs> Otherwise, it would not be possible. Uh, to reply email in, in this frequency. The, the, the fact is um, I'm surrounded by a genuinely good people who are good at what they're doing um, and they're better than me in what they're good at they're doing. And, and we happen to share these core values which are in Chinese that I will very quickly translate for you because it is going to be important in the answer of my personal answer. Um, but this office that I'm working in, 
uh, with about 20, 25 full-timers and 35 interns. Um, we don't call ourselves a office or a digital service. Uh, we call ourselves a space. Um, I don't give commands to my peers. And so they pick whatever they want to do, the green cards in this chart. And we do co-creation workshops every once in a while to make sure that we stay true to our core values, of which there are five. Uh, and uh, the central one is to build trust across sectors. And that's it. It is across the, sectors? Yeah, yeah, between sectors, between public sector, between the civil society, between people uh -huh. in part in the society. So, so to trust mm -hmm. people first, and then maybe build some trust back. So this is our core value. Um, the second value is to empower here, yeah, to empower the civil society so that they can be well informed and take delight in participate in public affairs. Uh, our third value here is to simplify the process of career public servants so they have a better quality of life. Um, our fourth core value says to absorb risk for innovation in the public service so public servant can innovate without fear. And finally, the fifth says to let people see the value of digital services. And so, so these values are- People see the value of what? Of, of digital services. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, and, and so all, all, all these five, they, they, they have tension. Uh, they, they are not always coherent. But, but I think we picked the central one, which is rebuilding trust. Um, so I'm not in fear of, of anything really, because every little bit I do, um, as long as I'm accountable and transparent, it's inching toward that value. Um, and so, so this is the, the picture, the overall picture of, of my office. Um, and um, in my office, my role is the, the not doer. <laughs> I, I don't do anything really. <laughs> and I, I don't assign things. I, I maybe give uh, inspiring speeches once in a while, but uh, otherwise I don't do much. But if there is something that needs to be done, like taking out the trash or um, ordering pizza that everybody is too busy to do, I, I do those things. And, and so, so that's, that's my role. Um, and so with a, a role like this, it's hard to be frustrated. Um, you should write a book called The Tao of Democracy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's you know when you were going to go for the values i i don't read chinese or anything but um i do know because i i have been to china i have a few um, um a couple of chinese friends um i i have some sense of the value of harmony in chinese culture and so I was very unsurprised that you picked trust. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I had an internal bet that it was somehow going to be related to harmony. And it's, you know, it goes back to this question of local culture strengths. You cannot build anything in the US, for example, that has trust as its most important value. You just, it just will go nowhere. Um, which is not a criticism of the US or a criticism of China or a criticism of anything. It's just phenomenological. It just won't fly. Uh, if you don't put some version of autonomy right at the center, nothing happens. So it's, it's really interesting that what I'm seeing that you do is you take values that would be familiar to people. You're speaking, I'm not hearing you because you're muted. No, it's okay. I'm, I'm speaking to someone 
out of the frame. So I'm, I'm sorry, just a second. Um, Mickey? Yeah. There's a way in which autonomy is not exactly autonomy, but the, uh, the sovereignty of the self is also part of Audrey's world as I understand it. Uh, there's something, there's something like that that's central, which could be translated as a, a quicker bridge, bridge between the thing you're saying is essentially American and trust. So I'm just curious what, if Audrey would speak Fundam to the, the Fundam anarchic. <laughs> Fundamentally, the way that I understand it, there are two frames, not frames, two aspects. There's the, the aspect of freedom and the aspect of interdependence. Mm -hmm. And um, a culture that can really integrate both, it's going to be very strong and solid, or mm -hmm. a human being that can integrate both. Or very and, liquid. <laughs> say that again? Or very liquid. <laughs> That's what I sense, that there's a way in which what Audrey is developing has that more mm -hmm. that, that integration is much closer there's more of a yin yang uh, dance and internalized in each other kind of dimension to those <laughs> it's air excuse me I was grounding you too much Audrey <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right all the spaces I'm Chrissy um, I, then, I still uh, yes yeah, please yeah. my question is how can we serve you you are being so generous with your time to give us information and ideas and all of that and and i i feel motivated in some way to serve you okay um well first of all the original purpose to to learn and to explore um the word the, the very concept of uh synesthesia. Um, and uh, the various web pages I was just reading, um, uh, it, it's very useful, uh, actually. Uh, it gives me new English words. Um, I, I guess I, I learned English as my, I don't know, fourth language, fifth language. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you just I, said. I, I, I learned English as my fourth or my fifth language when I was already 20 years old or something. So. Um, it, it is um, it is a acquired cognitive tool to me, and so um, I, I don't have an innate uh, feeling of of what words makes most sense when I'm trying to uh, translate. Um, so, so any word that can evoke a a more accurate um, representation of the the feeling, I think, is a gift to me uh, because. Then for the next conversation, I learned to refer people to, to these ideas, including the, the patterns uh, that Tom uh, outlines uh, on his website. Those are very useful, too. So uh, in, in many ways, you have already um, helped um, a lot. Got it. I'm trying to say. Just so you know, sympathy is not a general English word. No. People it's don't coined. Hear. It's coined and new. I understand that. Okay. Yeah, but but that's that's why that's why it's useful. Right? Um, all the old words has been um, caught and so and bought again, right? So it, it, it's it's um, commodity, right? so which is why we need new thoughts and mm -hmm. new, new words. It, it matters in which thought yeah, those thoughts are are thought. And then because I don't think natively in uh, English. Without the headset, if you can get closer, it would be good. Okay. Um, that's, let me see if I can do it um, in a soft way. Um, Is it better? Can you hear me better oh, yeah, this way? Much yes. Better. Much okay. better. That's, that, that's great. And you're very loud. Nick. Right. So, yeah. So, so yeah, um, what I'm trying to say is that it, it matters when I try to think with people who think in English, which words uh, is used to think. And uh -huh. I think that so far has been the 
the greatest gift because otherwise I'll think in new terms in other languages, but I'll have to uh, reduce its dimensions uh, with my limited English vocabulary of common words. Vicky is a coiner of phrases too and has a couple of ones that are central to her work, which might serve you, uh, like the non-controversial essence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would be happy uh, to share with you, you know, some things that I've learned through my work. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I think that in this context, it is, you know, if you go back to the police picture with those three areas, mm -hmm. yeah. So when you have this picture, it doesn't matter how many people are in, in each one, but you have three clusters. What current mechanisms do you have to bring these three clusters together? <laughs> together. Mm -hmm. um, there are two main um, ways, but first I have to explain how mathematically POLIS works. Um, POLIS works through a idea called uh, k-means clustering. It means that based on how people react to each other's offerings, to use Tom's word, um, uh, how, how alike they are, and that forms clusters. But if there are 100 comments, then it is a 100-dimensional space, which is unfathomable in a human brain, which is why it used another mathematical construct called principal component analysis and try to find a um, axis, the vector of the most controversy and use it as the X dimension. And it tried to find the orthogonal, that is to say, um, inter independent, equally controversial or slightly less controversial aspect as the Y axis. We prototype it in virtual reality, which gives us a third axis. But otherwise, it is just trying to find where the um, diversity stems from and then reproject the clusters of which there may be one to five at any given time into this image. So it is the face of the crowd, but it's not machine learning or artificially intelligent in any way. It is mostly just a way to draw pretty pictures of diversity and uniqueness. Uh, and so to, to bring these together, mathematically speaking, is resolved either by a novel idea that suddenly everyone can identify with. And so which will result in basically a new group that looks roughly like this one, that, that recolise around this new idea. Or it could be done by having essentially no new ideas, but a eclectic blending of existing ideas that people, the less radical part of the people can agree to. In which case you will start to see groups moving into the middle and people from the old groups joining the new group and the new group growing slightly larger. Uh, in a radically centrism kind of way. Uh, and sometimes both dynamic happens at once and the system has to recalibrate and refine the X and Y axis that represent new controversies. Um, and what I'm getting at is that the two dimensions in this picture, they are not fixed. As long as they become non-controversial, the system find new controversies to become X and Y axis. So to achieve a perfect unity is very difficult or impossible in, in polis. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, so this is the, the core of the polis idea, is that it constantly find a place where people still disagree. Why? What's, what's, what's the uh, point? It's more fun. Um, <laughs> It's more fun this way. It's more engaging. It, it 
gets people coming back. And also, it makes people think. Because if I, I think I'm in this tribe, but I see my Facebook friends, my Twitter friends, everyone I know, my families in other tribes, it really engaged me to think maybe they do have a point. Right? They, these are people I have personal connection with. We just did not talk about Airbnb over dinner. Um, and so by representing people through the dimension of how they disagree, actually engage conversation if those are people they already have a personal connection with. And all the while, there is this majority opinion tab, which is the default display anyway, uh, that keeps track of what consensus people have already reached despite the currently displayed factions. Uh, and so it is a game that is, that is infinite. We, we harness its power and play it for a few weeks at a time, but, but it is um, a game uh, that could go on and on. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't think this is a, a, a like completely um, to the point answer to your question, but, but this is how, how I see the system. Um, isn't your point at some point to find a solution <clears throat> that people can go along with, like the, the, the hospital? Yes. Uh, and, but that's, I mean, that's the, the governor's interest in this. That's, that's the hook for the prime minister to join this game. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know it. how to explain this properly, but No, yes. I understand. <laughs> yeah. You are just enjoying the process. You're not yes. particularly wedded to this or that result. That's exactly right. I'm just having fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> And there's a whole other dimension, which is there's where they're going towards a convergence, an actionable convergence. This is something I'm newly thinking I understand, is that the actionable convergence doesn't specifically come out of the Paulist process. No. The Paulist process, the Paulist process is showing certain possibilities where consensus seems to have emerged and then tossing that into face-to-face -face interactions as a stimulant. And there can be both disagreements and agreements can be stimulants, but it's the face-to-face -face thing, which is if you're gonna get something actionable, it's gonna come out of that. Uh, and this is just a really powerful way of yeah. checking around the conversational system. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So like, it's it's, it's that's crowd right. agenda setting, but but it's yeah. it's not a substitute for the conversation following the agenda. Uh, that's, I, a total, I, that's a total from, major revelation. Yeah, from what I read about it, from what I read about it, I had a completely different yeah. picture of what this was. What what right. has been written about it presented it in an entirely different light, and I now right. feel. Uh, embarrassed, not in relation to you, uh, in relation to truth, because uh, I included, you know, like a paragraph or two about this in a chapter that I wrote for a book. And what I wrote in that, in that little bit is completely incorrect. But it's already beyond the editing process. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Well, no, no, if you were, you were writing about the Uber, the Uber case, then all, all the reported facts are probably right. Uh, but the, uh, there, was, yeah. there was another article I no longer remember that indicated that what happened in relation to Uber was um, extrapolated and scaled and that, the, you, you know, that this process uh, is used to make all decisions. The parliament doesn't make any legislation without consulting with the people first. All of this, I think... That, that's true. That, that, that's actually true. We, we have a, a central system, the join.gov.tw system. Uh, it's like regulations.gov, um, right? Um, where people uh, publish the regulation that are to be passed. Uh, and all the regulations, all the laws, did do actually uh, post on here, usually for 60 days. There are some exceptions, but usually for 60 days and get 
wow, any number of participation, like large number of participation. This is about electronic ID. This is about um, marriage equality, essentially, uh, and um, decriminalization of adultery, um, and this tells so on and so forth. Participation, but how does it inform the legislative process? So, um, yes. So, so here is where we need to talk about constitutional difference um, between the Taiwan system and the U.S. system. In Taiwan, um, the MPs can present a bill to the General Assembly, but the administration can also present a bill to the General Assembly. The Supreme Court, the judicial system, can also present a bill. The corrective, the, uh, as the control yuan, the independent auditing agency, as well as the agency for examination and public service, um, can also present a bill. So, so all the five organs can present bills for the General Assembly to consider. Usually, it is the version that is proposed by the administration that becomes the base version for MPs to decide. And there is no Senate, there's just the General Assembly. And so if the president appoints the premier and is the head of the party of the parliament as the situation now, essentially regulations and laws are very close. Um, the law still gets another more round of deliberation, but they stem out of the same regulation forming process. Mm -hmm. You don't need AMP to support uh, this version at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you just talk to the majority party. And, and this is important because then um, the executive UN, the administration, when it makes a point by point response to people's ideas or consensus um, gathered from online spaces, it, it can't substitute for the MPs, but it provides the MPs in their deliberation all the basic facts mm -hmm. that they use for deliberation. Yeah. And so, so this is a different system than, than the U.S. system. I, I, I understand this. I think that the piece that I wrote that is completely erroneous is that from the article, I had understood that the police thing was a, converge, a tool for convergence but it's actually a tool to identify divergence and then use other tools to create convergence. Ah, okay. Well, well, it's, don't be too, too, too hard on yourself. I mean, well, this does converge like it here, right? It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It, it is a converging tool, but yeah, but not in the place. Uh, maybe you did imply here, not at all. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and a lot of the articles gave more potency to the convergence that came out of Fuller's. Mm -hmm. And that was part of my initial excitement, and I'm grateful for uh, the transformation of my excitement <laughs> to something that's, to something that's well, more complex. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, if the prime minister herself or himself or the ministers in charge of this participate in the initial game of polis. They, they, they are like any good deliberation. Um, they, they will be changed uh, a little bit when, when it comes to the later processes. So it's not like, mm -hmm. it's not useful, uh, but it's a psychological use. Yeah. It is not a, a hard codified use. Right. And they, they will be influenced by any number of things, including any convergences that happen to show up in, in polis, but it's not as if they have to take every item of convergence that happens in polis and either implement it uh, or say why they can't or won't. No, no they, they do that. They do that. They do that. They it do it that. is true. They, they do that. Usually so they, at a face-to-face at a, at a -face meeting here. They, they uh -huh. do do that, but, but they don't do it here. This is very important right. okay, because, very because just like for the Uber case, we did a point by point um, answer. Uh, I think we accept all of it. One with some reservation about uh, a driver able to join multiple fleets. That's still um, 
in a gray area. Uh, we ended up doing another consultation for the platform economy guidelines for that. So, so there is a point by point uh, response, right. but That's it's not point. at a stage of signing the bill or presenting right. to the to the to the uh, president to sign. That happens here. There's more process after this point. Right. That's like the, the point in the middle of your bow tie here. <laughs> mm -hmm. The point in the middle is where the, the, there's, a, there's a very explicit digestion of what has come out of the police thing. And that digestion is an informational input into the further deliberation that results in what finally comes out. Yes. This second part of the, uh, the, the second diamond mm -hmm. is not visible in mm -hmm. the vast majority of reports mm -hmm. that are coming out of Taiwan about, you know. That, that's right. I, I, think, I think even though in all our introductory materials, like in the video you just saw, um, the facilitator said explicitly that this area will not be visible to you uh, at this meeting. This, this area, the ministry will go back to their respective ministers and the prime minister will someday well, it turns out really quickly, but there's no guarantee. Uh, um, make a response uh, somewhere down the road. And, and we, we made it very clear in the beginning. But yes, as you said, so the, many the English write-ups skip step. The, uh, the official uh, deliberations are actually, ha the ones that are confined to government are happening in the convergence part of the second diamond. That's right. And we often, but not always, invite people who make really good points at the initial diamond phase. Like, um, I will m make another example to show the dynamism of it. Um, for example, there was this petition that says, uh, we have a explosively difficult to use tax filing system by a petitioner. Uh, and that's because in Taiwan, only people uh, using Microsoft Windows have a good experience finding their taxes online last year. Uh, people with Mac and Linux and iPad and Android um, had a very bad time. Uh, and because that's a technical reason. But anyway, there's a petitioner who petitioned for it. Even before there's 5,000 people, I think we intervened when there's just 100 people or so and uh, say, we will do the first diamond with you, uh, which we did. And then after the first diamond, it turns out all those petitioners, they're experts in design, in interaction, in communication, and they, they know more than the government people, the vendors. So we open up the, the user journey, um, which outlines the entire service um, journey and say, okay, you, you, you guys know more than we do. And so we hold five co-creation workshops um, after that, and everything is transparent for the second diamond. So this does happen, but it only happens mm -hmm. when the public service thinks the civil society, the stakeholders know more um, than the government for this particular issue. And we did end up uh, co-design uh, this year's tax filing experience and uh, the government mostly just provided a budget, just as in the construction of the social innovation lab. But I would say only about one in five cases um, that makes two to the second stage. The other four fifths are politics as usual in the last half of the, this time. Uh -huh. And the beginning, the first diamond happens only when there's some energy from civil society to do it. Uh, That's right. That's right. The, 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 uh, um, the government, people in the government are not necessarily convening that, although they, <laughs> I recognize they are also citizens and could do this, but they also have- Oh the yeah, power oh yeah, they, they did a lot of petitions about working condition of public servants, you won't, you won't believe it. Um, there's, there's this huge petition about how we can only take absence of four hours units, but people want to take one hour unit of leaf. And that gets amazing number of petitioners very quickly. Which and a, it's, yeah. It, that, that I can understand that. And that's different from the president deciding 
he's, he or she is going to have a, uh, do a first, one of these first, you know, the, the first two thirds or three quarters of this process, or they're going to directly insert a proposed bill into the last quarter of the process. We are now having laws that mandate this, this process uh, currently in the parliament. Um, one of which has already passed the new referendum act. Uh, it's Switzerland style, very low threshold for the first diamond, slightly more for the second diamond uh, referendum act, which is binding to not just the president, but to the parliament as well. Uh, the first batch of such referendums will happen end of this year. And this is a very co-learning process. We have another law called the Digital Communication Act that in its initial draft has the name V Taiwan written in its um, text. Uh, it's been since taken out to be more inclusive. Any civil society initiated multi-stakeholder open mechanism, but, but it means the same thing. Um, and ironically, this is one of the laws that passed the V-Taiwan process, so it's uh, bootstrapping itself, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and, um, and, and it's, it's specified that this process must be used uh, with sufficient budget and support for anything related to internet governance, which means digital issues that affects everyone, not just people in Taiwan. And so that, that is, again, part of the CPTPP, uh, the Trans-Pacific Pact. The, uh, the Trans-Pacific Pact uh, without U.S. at the moment, but maybe someday with the U.S. again. Uh, and, um, and so it's uh, on the fast track. So if we pass it in the next few months, then, then we bind the, the, the administration to run this process for arbitrary issues, not just petitions and things that has ministerial and civil society mm -hmm energy. So, so yeah, we're, well, this, we're codifying this process. This is, this process has been tagged onto the, the pact, the That's legislation right. for the pact. That's oh right. boy. I've done, it's nice to see something tagged on to such a thing that is actually created here. There's all sorts of things that get stuck onto, onto bills that are, have nothing to do with it and they're horribly destructive. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, the, the rationale um, in, in very simple one paragraph is there's one part in CPTPP that regulates the, the junk mail, right? Uh, unsolicited advertisement. Uh, and people can click to unsubscribe. That's part of the pact. But any cross-country pact like this need to be deliberated in a way that include all the stakeholders, uh, including the spammers. Spammers are people too. Uh, and so we need a, a fair deliberation mechanism and to support that we need fundamental right and to support that we need v taiwan like um spaces uh it, it's actually it makes a lot of sense but Definitely. yeah <laughs> I, i'm realizing mickey that your um convergent facilitation is a, a precious resource for the second diamond for the second diamond totally yeah Dynamic facilitation, other things. There's a there's a number of things that are that fit yeah. really well in there. But I think the the logic of convergent facilitation is particularly uh, comfortable within the way of thinking uh, that uh, Audrey is uh, is expressing. Yeah, that's an invitation. In case you don't recognize it. Yes, I recognize <laughs> it. I I am I am. Um... So let, let me uh, explain. Convergent facilitation is a methodology that I developed. Um, I haven't adopt, adapted it yet. I don't think I will because I'm not a techie person. But um, do you know the Lumio people? Yes, very intimately because we use that during the Occupy. Great. So I have talked with them and they are now creating a mock-up of adding two features from convergent facilitation to Lumio. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I, um, I can, through this, introduce it. So one of them is um, the uh, kind of like a, the principle that says 
that um, people can disagree at the level of their positions or ideas or preferences or what they want, but um, you can reach agreement at a deeper level of underlying principles much faster mm -hmm. than at the level of positions. So, for example, um, you know, in the in the um, most recently, I was using it with people from the UN and academics and um, international labor office and a few government, all of that. And they were looking at the topic of child labor, child labor policy. And there is a huge schism within the field of child labor. I don't need to get into the details. It was so much so that they were very, some of them were very dubious about being in the same room for three days. For what purpose? Um, and yet within a few hours, we were able to come up with a list of 15 principles that they all agreed on. <coughs> that if you are going to solve, address the question of child labor, you need to give attention to these principles. And th this, this move, <coughs> I call it the non-controversial essence. And uh, I don't have the techie thing like you do, so I'm just going to paint it in your imagination. Um, there is a spectrum where on one side, you have each person's exact specific preference of what they want and exactly the way that they want it, etc. And somewhere all the way on the other side of the spectrum, um, you know, is, you know, the fundamental, very core way that each one of us wants to be aligned with life and thrive, which doesn't preclude death. Now, as, as we move deeper and Deeper in the on the spectrum, you lose specificity, but you gain um, coherence. Um, if you move, if you move um, fast enough, I'm going even deeper than core value. It's kind okay. of a core value is a spot on the spectrum. Okay. Um, if you move in the other direction you gain information about how to solve a problem. So mm -hmm. I, I created this term, I call it the non-controversial essence, mm -hmm. which is a kind of a sweet spot that is the minimal loss of specificity that would mm -hmm. allow controversy to disappear. Mm -hmm. And um, it's always there. So it's somewhere between core value and preference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, Non-controversial essence, I call it. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm exploring now with the Lumio people is how they can add it to their platform where there can be, you know, like a particular board where somebody could say, hey, from what I'm hearing, from what different people are saying, I think this might be a non-controversial essence in mm -hmm. the discussion that we're having. And if mm -hmm. people really agree on it, then it becomes, then you end up having a list of things that no longer represent, no longer represent um, advocacy or disagreements. They represent the essential characteristics of the solution space. Once mm -hmm. you have all of them, and you have a commitment to a solution that works for everyone, your search for a solution is very well defined. Mm -hmm. It speeds up a process of convergence and it speeds mm -hmm. up the process of trust building. Mm -hmm. So that's one of, one of the two. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. uh, the, link, the link to trust is a very interesting one for him. Oh, this is not sure. non-conference. Non contra ah yes you wrote it right I it just your handwriting mm -hmm. was a little bit yeah what did you sure. say Tom? I was saying uh, Audrey that the trust dimension is fundamental mm -hmm. to Audrey the, the the idea this is a trust building thing is yes. also mm -hmm. interesting. Cool. 
And there's mm -hmm. so much of this that I didn't realize before today that is fundamentally about the transformation of relationship. It's mm -hmm. not just problem solving. The, the, it's a way in which the problem solving activity is, as you might put it, Audrey, an excuse for mm -hmm. building trust. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. not. No, 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 because, because what ends up happening is um, if you have ideological differences, in my experience, they won't converge. Mm -hmm. What makes it possible to converge is that people have a practical problem to solve mm -hmm. that affects them, that they, that, they, that they have stakes in. If they just come to talk about, you know... Um, the abortion debate, they won't. But if mm -hmm. they are entrusted with coming up with a solution to the abortion divide that all of them can agree on, and they are from across the divide, but they, they are entrusted with policy for the country, they will mm -hmm. convert, which is what happened in Ireland. Yes, uh, and this is an old idea, right? This is overlapping consensus from Rawls. Um, that says people with different ideologies converge if you present them with specifics rather than abstract. Yes, um, they have a problem to solve that affects them. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not a, an excuse for relationship. It really mm -hmm. is driven by solving mm -hmm. a problem. It mm -hmm. uses relationship as a tool for problem solving. Mm -hmm. It recognizes that mm -hmm. you need relationship in order to bridge differences. That differences are not bridged on the basis on the basis of rational argumentation. Mm -hmm. I, I do agree, um, and also the importance of food need to be injected at some point. But uh, I, I do I do agree. You no, know, seriously, um, the the non controversial essence I think um, is very insightful. Uh, I'm not very clear on how. Lumio, uh, with its discussion board voting flow, um, can incorporate it. I, I can't quite visualize it in my mind at the moment, but I visualize it as people identifying a a summary of 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 a statement that captures the essence of what's being already being talked about, and people somehow commit to talk about this instead. Uh, in order to find a solution space. Uh, um, let me, let me, let me, um, I can do screen share. So let me find, give me a moment. I will find the, um, this thing, mm -hmm. the core principles. Mm -hmm. Right, but you, you start, but you said there's two um, augmentations. What, what is the other one? Uh, let me just show you this. Okay. It's um, easier seen. Yeah. Just so you, you get a sense of what these principles look like. Yes. So I think this would require you to get out of screen share. And Which now I, there you are, are, I think. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm no longer sure. And uh, it's your okay. turn. So I will do that. Um here. Okay. So um, everybody agreed with all of these. They came, uh, uh, there's, there's more, there's a, a couple more um, below. So they are very, they are significant. They're not, um, you know, we believe in love, you know, they're very significant and specific but they don't have, but they are just below actual policy. You see? They, they seem coherent also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but I mean, um, so for Lumio, I'm thinking methodologically. Because I, for I Pope, can't, for, I, uh, Audrey, you uh, will need to talk yeah? to about it because I don't actually okay. know what they're going to do technologically. Okay, okay. But, but, but what? what, what Yes. They were very excited, and they wanted. Okay, to, okay. Uh, uh, but but what I'm trying to say is that um, all the sixteen points, they're coherent. They're surprisingly coherent. So so do they arise? 
by having one and then two and then three and then finally 16 uh, with the criteria that the new ones added to the list must not be logically paradoxical with the ones already on the list or do they surface it some other way? Uh, just about any application they can surface in a different way. In this particular case, um, the facilitator team came up with a draft based on things that we heard from people. Okay. And we presented it to them. We presented, I think, eight. Okay. And, um, you know, there were tweaks and then there were mm -hmm. additions that came from the group. Mm -hmm. In this particular case. In other cases, mm -hmm. people are saying, we should do this and 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 we should do this. And then mm -hmm. I come back and say, this is what I believe is important in what you're saying. And I add it only when I feel in my gut that it's actually going to be non-controversial. I see. I see. So the non-controversy is it's a value that is, that is held in the facilitator's mind. Yes. Because and can, okay. group can take that on also, but the facilitator mm -hmm. is a source yes. of that. And, and the most interesting cases are cases where you actually need two different principles that are in dynamic tension with each other in order mm -hmm. to achieve non-controversy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where either one of these will leave someone unsettled. But if you add the other one, because they're in dynamic tension, they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Just drawing this little tai chi here. Okay, right. So, so, that's, so yes. That's, the, that's mm -hmm. the one component. And the other mm -hmm. one is the aim of this process is a solution that is acceptable to all, mm -hmm. that really works for everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not the same as consensus. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it, it has, I would say, like a 90% overlap with consensus, but not mm -hmm. 100. Did you read mm -hmm. the material on rough consensus? Oh. Yes. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if it's closer to that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't have it integrated enough to be able to 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 do the mapping. It okay. was interest. It was interesting to read. There is, um, there is a, a similarity in terms of attending to all concerns and integrating them and evolving the solution or evolving the principles, depending whatever you need to do. But at mm -hmm. a certain point, as the facilitator, mm -hmm. you need to ask the question. Some version of the question, is everyone okay with it? It mm -hmm. turns out that how you ask the question has different results. So I will mm -hmm. illustrate it dramatically because I would never use either one of these, but it's again, oops, it's again a spectrum. On one end, I can ask, is anybody going to kill themselves if we adopt this decision? Mm -hmm. And um, of course that has so little room for discussion because when I think, you know, no, no I'm not going to kill myself. I'm going to be super unhappy. I'm going to hate them. I'm going to be resentful, but I'm not going to kill myself. So you can get a decision this way always, but it's not really something that uh, engaged the people. And then all the way on the other end of it is, is there even one letter in this proposed decision that anybody has even the slightest discomfort anywhere in you. <laughs> and of course, if you ask it at that level, you will never reach a decision, right? Because there's always going to be something that's gonna be uncomfortable for someone. And you're not trying to make everybody happy. So there's an art and a skill to finding the question, mm -hmm. what, is, what is the threshold at which you are inviting dissent? But what it has in common in an odd way with polis is that it invites dissent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't create pressure to agree. It invites mm -hmm. dissent. It's just a question of how much. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, um, does anybody have concerns? We'll raise more discussion than if you say, does anybody have significant concerns? Mm -hmm. Or if you ask, does anybody have 
concerns that you believe will actually impair our capacity to function if we adopt it. You know, so there are different levels and choosing the right threshold to ask um, changes things. So as you invite more concerns, ultimately, theoretically, you can have a more powerful decision because it has incorporated more more uh, dissent, more concerns, but you are wiping people out because mm-hmm. the process of engaging with dissent is very taxing. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, again, it's a sweet spot. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's it. Those are mm-hmm. the two kind of like core innovations. And there is a sequence, there's a process, all of that. Um, you don't really need to know more about it in the moment, but these are the two specific things. And, and the second one, I think the way that Lumio people will integrate it is that there will be a possibility for who, uh, you know, to have kind of like a drop down menu of threshold mm-hmm. questions. Uh-huh. And the person who asks mm-hmm. can choose which one and each installation, they can create their own threshold menu. Mm-hmm. And, that's what I'm hoping they will do, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to be a computer programmer mm-hmm. probably before you were born. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know when you were born, but I, I, uh, I was programming mm-hmm. until 1988, uh, 1989. Okay. I, that's the year I learned programming when I was eight years old. So maybe okay. I picked it up from you, but yes. Um. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but I, I was working on IBM mainframe, so I'm completely useless and not interested in programming anymore. But I have that, mm-hmm. that kind of sensibility stays with me. I, I still, uh, yeah, I, I work on IBM mainframes too and uh, AIX after that. Um, but that's a it's very different conversation. So, so yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I think we're, our methodologies are very compatible. Um, there's, there's a genuine insight in that you can pick from the interface from any suicides uh, to, to any one letter changes. Uh, I, I think this is a, a, a real insight because that kind of democratizes the, the humming <laughs> uh, volume yes. threshold uh, yes. to everyone in the room. Uh, whereas before it is a social norm and so people get accustomed to a, a certain threshold. I think yeah. this is a genuine insight. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, everything else feels very familiar. Great. Um, yeah. And, and I, I also want to come back to Tom's point um, because if we start from a, um, a time zone, a time feeling that spans seven generations, right? Uh, then, then all these are, like as Leonard Cohen says, right, cracks in everything. That's how the light gets in. Uh, preferably the crack is of a certain shape so the light can shine through and maybe make a rainbow or something, but it's all part of the, the draw so that people can, can come to the co-intelligent process. And, and, and in this view, all these spectrums and issues and whatever are really just excuses. Uh, but uh, when there is a much shorter time span, like there's climate change, we need to stop yeah. it in five years, we need to agree on something, otherwise we'd better start sending our spaceships, then, then um, we don't have the luxury of, of this um, building trust across generation uh, worldview. So what I'm saying is that it's, it's really the same process. It's just how zoomed in or out you yes. are on the time scale. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to say that um, for uh, you signed up for six hours. I mm-hmm. didn't. Okay. Um, I, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to um, to find a. Um, I don't. I don't need to leave right now. But mm-hmm. I. I have many other things on my plate. Mm-hmm. And, 
and I, I also want to go to sleep at some point. Mm -hmm. So I would like to move towards closure of my presence. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't, I don't know if there's anything that anybody wants for me or from me. Um, but I'm, I'm open to hear if mm. there are any open threads. In terms of getting to know you, the two points that I was, that I'm thinking of, uh, I mean, there's the big thing of nonviolent communication, which is a major, major piece of your life. And, um, but there's the, the two things that I see particularly connecting to Audrey's world, world is the, your, um, your PhD thesis and your stories your stories on willingness as the foundational thing. Those are the bringing of, the bringing of emotion into sociology and the play, the, the interesting way you went about trying to do that in your thesis is what, I'm, what I want. It feels like I could summarize it in two minutes, but it would be probably scream, no, 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 no. So if it, those things should come out of your mouth rather than mine. I, I, I think part of it is, I, uh, uh, to be completely honest, I am not seeing the link, mm -hmm. so I don't know what to speak to. It's more like I would be doing it because you're asking me to. I, 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 so so I, why, why, why don't Tom spend yeah. two minutes and read, like, <laughs> let's hear the, the screaming. <laughs> okay. Great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy anyway uh the, the i have never read the whole thesis but i uh but i talked a bunch with mickey about it and i've read pieces of it and what i got in essence is mickey was looking at the founding men they're all men of sociology and you know marx and veblen and these guys and none of them dealt with emotion as a factor in their theories. And she's going, wait a minute, you're talking about the dynamics of society and you're not including emotion. There's something fundamentally wrong with this. And she tried to do her thesis, both in a, you know, with a rational discipline, academic discipline, and with emotion trying to model <clears throat> what would sociology look like if it did take you know, here's an, here's an example of a sociological study if you did take emotion seriously. So that's my quickie summary. I will add to it, there's nothing wrong with what you said, I'm not screaming, but I will add to it that, that for me it is deeper than sociology. For me it is the entire patriarchal Western civilization rests on the assumption that rationality disembodied rationality is what makes humans humans and a kind of like negation of nature, of uh, emotion, of um, relationship, of embeddedness, all of that. And so I, am, I was aiming to in, uh, integrate, uh, to offer a model that would integrate rationality and emotions. Mm -hmm. into a, a larger, more coherent whole. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering why you wrote Universal Human Needs, Audrey. Mm -hmm. you because, because I was going through the, the material. Right? Oh. Um, <laughs> the, the Bay NYC material 10 years oh. ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> identifies. I, don't, the, I can't quite yeah. comprehend how your mind works, your mind, <laughs> body, whatever, you know. Anyway, right. So, so other, right. The N NVC nonviolent communication is yeah. Mickey is one of the, if not the, in my opinion, leading practitioners and trainers. She's embedded in it. She's she's a master. Some, lots of people doing nonviolent communication follow a very rote mm -hmm. kind of thing, which is powerful in itself. You know, you can do rote things powerfully. Mm -hmm. but sometimes Mickey does it when you can't even tell she's doing it. It's just mm -hmm. a very smooth thing, and it does mm -hmm. delve farther into the thing, into the uh, uh, where life energy and motivations and orientations and meaning come from. Yes, and, and there is, 
you are flattening it to a doing. For me, it's mm -hmm. a way of being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I say. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's a okay. the source of life energy. There's a level of human life that is a source of where life energy comes from. And then the word needs is an effort to sort of yeah. put a tag on that. And yeah. people can do it in attempt to, to evoke that dimension of life from somebody else and work their way towards, well, how's that going to play out in the way that works for everybody in this situation? Uh, and so And... You can live from that place, which is, I think, what Mickey's. And there's something that there's a, 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 a practice that I do that relates to what you were talking about in terms of the luxury and we don't have time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a while back, I was part of the project that most NBC people are still in that project of let's train enough people in NBC, reach a critical mm -hmm. mass. And then the world mm -hmm. will change. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, considering the stressors that the world is in and the number of people that are born faster than we can even catch up with them to feed them, let alone train mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. that's a losing project. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for, um, for uh, interventions that are mm -hmm. much faster. Mm -hmm. And so, for example... I can give you an example of two questions that instantly raise people's way of function, level of function. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily stay there when you go away, but you can, you know, let's say work with the group, raise their level of function, get them to make, to connect with each other, mm -hmm. build trust, make a decision, anchor it in action. And then even mm -hmm. if they revert to lower level function, <coughs> mm -hmm. the action will sustain, sustain them over time. That's a mm -hmm. faster way to move. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm looking for these kind of like key phrases or principles or questions. One of them is this simple question. What is a solution that's going to work for everyone? Mm -hmm. And I See, I literally see when I ask people that question, whether it's a group or even an individual, I see they look, their eyes look to a different place. It's mm -hmm. something changes in their body. They, they move from I to we mm -hmm. uh, in a way that is really amazing. And they start mm -hmm. looking for different solutions. That's one such question. Another mm -hmm. one is what is most important here? Mm -hmm. another one is what's the real purpose so you can come up with such questions that kind of like um, guide people's attention and attention is the most precious resource that we have of all mm -hmm. where we put our attention and what we do with our attention so mm -hmm. that's um, that's um, I think plenty what I can do is I can send you the, I have like a three or four condensed version of my dissertation. Mm -hmm. If Tom is right and some of it will interest you, you will then be able to tell me chapter two and chapter seven, please. <laughs> and then I will mm -hmm. send them to you. Mm -hmm. He'll, he'll okay. get a red and a half hour, not a problem. Right. Is that the little book of courageous <laughs> no. living? No, 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 no. It's not, it's not on one? the website. It was it's never not on the website. It was mm -hmm. never published. Well, then I, I would not have read it. Um, so, so yes, um, yeah. So, so you've moved from from gospels to to koans, uh, which I think is awesome, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, and and I think um, I, I have just one clarifying question. Um, so, in in our recursive public, um, which we call Gap Zero, um, we we really consciously bring technologies uh, into it that adds to the recursiveness uh, and open space technology, OST, and nonviolent communication, NBC, are the two labels that we actually use. Um, are you lot. using NBC? Think, yes, the, these are the, the two main monikers okay. we add to our recursive public. We try to, and, and I have to admit that NBC is, um, is of lesser importance than, than the OST. 
Um, uh, we, yeah. I, we, we're, we're, that doesn't we're, surprise me because most people who will introduce it to you will not yeah. introduce it in a way that you will see relevance and applicability. Yes, and and I and I, I now after seeing this picture, I, I think I I see how more recursiveness uh, and less instrumentality. I think that's the English. Um, it could yes. be uh, as part of the integration. So so thank you for that. Uh, but but my clarifying question is um, when you start with those koans like solution for all things we can all live with. Uh, most important or most purpose, do you do always um, want people to think about it and share it? Or do you just want people to contemplate it and go on doing whatever the process there is? Because it's two very different facilitation methods. Yes, yes. It's, I think it, I am appreciating the question very much. Mm -hmm. I think it, it depends on the application. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but overall, I think that that knowing what question to ask is one of the most important interventions that we can do as humans mm. trying to create change. Mm. Mm. Right. So it's in the in the evocation itself. Uh, it's in the awareness level. It's not necessarily in whatever gets written down. You do it only if you. Mm have to, or the application calls for it. Questions yeah. are not there to be answered. <laughs> not necessarily, not necessarily. And, um, and um, so one of the points of the questions that I ask is to raise people's level of function, even mm -hmm. if momentarily. The other is to, it, it, they overlap, they intersect, but the, the other purpose that I have is to get people out of um, the obvious, the thinking that what is happening is obviously the only thing that could happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One could yeah, say to, to, questions mm -hmm. open space. They put yeah, it in a of space instead of a point. You know? Right, it de-anchors de people. Yeah, uh, yes. that, that I'm, I'm completely fine with. Thank you. So, so yes, I, I think we're on the same page. Um, Excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I will be very happy um, anytime you have a specific question about, you know, if there's this situation and from an NBC perspective, what can you do with it? Very happy to, you know, just uh, send me a quick email and I can send you a quick email back. Awesome. Thank you. And vice versa. Yeah. If at any time you want, you know, a, a consultation about applied Taoism to politics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can talk. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tom, yeah. for making this, making this possible. It was very pleasurable. Thank you for introducing me to Audrey. Thank you for um, poking your head into the possibility of being in this call. You've been absolutely essential to how it's unfolded, and I love the fact that you were here. Thank you, and your generosity of spirit, Tom, is very touching. And Audrey, I am in awe <laughs> of um, how you manage to take things that are so significant and so with so such big potential and be so lighthearted and fun about it. <laughs> wow. Thank well, you. it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> he can't help himself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay. Cheers. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye. <clears throat> so, I'm not quite ready to leave. No, Even though I don't have really. anything specific yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I did, I, I would like to do an, uh, a quick intro to dynamic facilitation for you since I refer to it sure. a number of times. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's my, you know, sort of jewel in the crown of process. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and I really, I will love to have a conversation sometime with you 
with uh, Rosa Zubizarreta, uh, mm -hmm. for whom we have dynamic, uh, the um, Tao of Democracy to thank. Uh, mm -hmm. Pulled it out of me. Uh, and she is, I got her into dynamic facilitation and she then wrote her master's thesis about why it works, which is mm -hmm. very instructive for me, although mm -hmm. I had taken courses in it and read about it and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. Her description is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And she says, and the facilitator is very dominant in dynamic facilitation, especially early on. Uh, mm -hmm. And you, you need to have people who are in some kind of conflict. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the extent they're in conflict, there's something to work with. And if they aren't in conflict at all, mm -hmm. uh, the founder of dynamic facilitation, Jim Ruff, uh, some of us got him to come and talk to people who were on the, the board of the fellowship, uh, the, uh, the, um, um, the fellowship of intentional communities who were largely trained in consensus process. Mm -hmm. And he did several hours with them and he got frustrated. He says, don't you, don't you people care about anything? <laughs> because they're, all being, they're all being so considerate of the, the larger <laughs> all of what other people think. And he couldn't get any traction. <laughs> it was very mm -hmm. funny, funny and frustrating and instructive moment. Uh, anyway, Rosa says that she's as facilitator. She is the uh, designated listener. Mm -hmm. that the people come in drunk on their own ideas mm -hmm. and can't really hear each other. So she mm -hmm. is going to be the designated listener. Mm -hmm. And so it starts out with, so who has something they want to say about this thing we're here to talk about? Mm -hmm. And somebody raises their hand. So you go, okay, tell me about it. And she does the, then you have facilitation <coughs> facilitator does a, uh, their goal is to have that person feel fully heard. Mm -hmm. And there are these, usually these four chart pads with uh, problem statements, possible solutions, concerns, and data. Mm -hmm. And so the facilitator is taking what the person's saying, going, oh, look, let me, let me see if I'm getting that, you know, and they're repeating it back, but not, not wrote word for word, not rotely. They're trying to get it. What's the essence of what this person's saying? And with the emotion, you know, the, all the emotion that's in it is part of it also. They're mm -hmm. stepping into that person's universe so that that person feels companioned in their world with zero judgment. They're just mm -hmm. trying to really be there with that person. Mm -hmm. They're writing stuff down on the chart pads, whichever one is right, going, am mm -hmm. I getting this right? You know, it's, a, it's an inquiry. It's not what you're saying is. It's nothing like that. It's like, you know, am I getting this right? And mm -hmm. the person goes, no, no, no. It's more like this. Okay. Da, 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 da. So this is back and forth going on. And the fully heardness is, has a psychological and physiological reaction in people. When they feel fully heard, the, the, the fight and flight response kind of evaporates. Mm -hmm. the, the withdrawal, the pushing their ideas, all that just disappears and they're just there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and simultaneously, everybody has heard what they had to say. They watched it being put up on the board, on the, uh, um, on the chart pads. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's in there in the collective space, again, with no judgment attached to it. Uh, mm -hmm. And they've also watched an idealized form of listening being modeled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else, she does the same thing to somebody else. Mm -hmm. and they have their, their turn is totally, it takes as long as it takes. And it's totally, the space is being held by the facilitator. Mm -hmm. uh, and if somebody suddenly chimes in while she's doing this with somebody, goes, no, that's full of shit, you know. She turns to them and says, hold on, I'll get to you in a minute. And when she turns to them, she says, what's your concern? Give it to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So their negative energy is translated into a concern, which is a mm -hmm. valuable piece of information Mm -hmm. for the group so it goes mm -hmm. up on the chart pads and am i getting this right you know back to the mm -hmm. reflective listening thing uh, mm -hmm. and each time for each person who isn't automatically giving a solution they'll get like the person with the concern once she gets a concern she goes okay so what do you think ought to be done about that 
Mm-hmm. You know, there's a little turn towards a solution and it goes up on the possible solutions. And again, reflecting, reflecting listening is happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if somebody goes, well, I don't know what should be done. The facilitator might say something like, if you were king of the world, what would you do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. if you knew what, what should be done, what would that be? You know, sort of to keep mm-hmm. on poking at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that what is happening to the group is that you know, when they walked in the room, they were looking at a particular frame, a particular context, a particular lens, a piece of the whole mm-hmm. that they were really attached to. Mm-hmm. Now they have wa- they've listened to all these other pieces of the whole, and it has produced what we in the business call the mess. <laughs> mm-hmm. The mess is now in the collective space. It's up there on the chart pads that have been stuck on the wall, all those individual sheets. And the facilitator might occasionally do a review of what's gone up there so far, sort of shove mm-hmm. the mess in people's faces. Mm-hmm. And then there's a, a phenomenon that happens that uh, is key to Rose's thesis, uh, her master's thesis, is that there's a shift that happens in the group where the group is now, everybody's kind of been opened up and they're now looking at the mess. Mm-hmm. And there's a compulsion in people to make sense. So there's, begins to emerge a, a collective energy desperate to make sense of the mess. Mm-hmm. And people will start to say things like, what if we blah, 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 you know, it's like the we language starts to come up and it's sort of mm-hmm. proposals start to pop up for pe- other people to consider. And it's, there's a brainstormy kind of energy that starts to come out. Mm-hmm. And again, if, and, and at that point, the facilitator stops doing the reflective listening. They're just doing chart pad, recording stuff on chart pads. And then in the midst of that, somebody go, no, no, that's really stupid. We shouldn't. And she'll go, give it to me. What's your concern? At that point, she steps in. There's this occasional interventions and reflective listening uh, when the energy gets stuck, stopped. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then as people start popping up with these, this is, gets into a kind of conversation that Jim Ruff, who created this, calls uh, choice creating, mm-hmm. uh, which is when we're all together. Mm-hmm. Working on the problem. It's no longer one piece against another piece. The, mm-hmm. the whole group is working on the whole problem and sensing into it. And very and there's when they're in that mode, if it's given sufficient time, there's almost always some kind of breakthrough. And sometimes mm-hmm. the breakthrough is in a solution where somebody mm-hmm. goes, Oh, we could do blah blah blah. And there's sort of the group goes, ah, you know, so a collective aha, a recognition that this is, uh, as a Native American guy said once, it's like we talk until there's nothing left but the obvious truth. You know, so it's, ah, there's a settling into this. Uh, and there's other kinds of breakthrough, like people going, we're, we're looking at this all wrong. And there's a shift to a different perspective, a different level of system or, or thinking about it. Uh, which reframes the whole thing. And it's almost like starting again in a new space. And of course, there's relational shifts. If these people at each other's throats before, they're no longer that way. They're, they're in the space creating solutions together. Mm-hmm. And it's totally nonlinear and emergent. It's in the class of emergent processes because uh, mm-hmm. you can't get from A to B. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not what's going on. It's a, there's a loosening up and freeing up of life energy to address the collective mm-hmm. thing. so mm-hmm. that's that's the quick intro to how df works and it's one of these things that's very simple and very hard <laughs> it's like the, the counting mm-hmm. your breath thing all you got to do is breathe and watch your breathing so simple you know <laughs> but it's to, to be a master facilitator there's a kind of presence and a kind of flowing with the energy of the group and how things are shifting and you know you may notice somebody sitting with their arms crossed and you realize that's energy you know, you're following the energy of the group. You go after them, not just the person who's jumping up and down. You know, there's all different kinds of energy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so the more conflict there is, the more juice, the more energy there is. 
you know, mm -hmm. conflict is life energy and dynamic facilitation recognizes and utilizes that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I see this as a close cousin of the key stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and of um, the getting to yes, principled negotiation is a somewhat more linear version of that. But again, it's going, it's trying to get at underneath, underneath where people are thinking and reacting to each other. Mm -hmm. There's powerful common ground. It's not just common ground. There's, there's power in that life mm -hmm. energy in that. So the two in my, in my uh, pattern language, I, after I had come up with these 70 patterns and I kept wanting to put more and the guy who was working with me, said, you got to stop somewhere. So he stopped me at 70. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I needed to figure out the related patterns because that's part of, are you familiar with pattern languages in general? This is, mm -hmm. Design patterns um, is there's a thing, very important uh, part. There's a practice called pattern languages, yes. pattern language. Yes. Uh, well, I, I, I read most of the pages linking to and linked uh, from the co-intelligence art page on dynamic facilitation, so you can assume. Oh, um, okay, so yeah. you, you're already having It's in my mind, and, and <laughs> while you were talking, I also read the 2006 uh, manual on dynamic facilitation, so <laughs> you can also assume that I <laughs> have the background information. I can't keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's me trying to catch up with you. It's, it's work happens. Yeah, but it took years me years to get here. And I gave you minutes. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so I know that um, the original pattern language was on um, communities that have this magical quality and all sorts of other pattern languages that have been made. And I was part of creating a pattern language for group process. Mm -hmm. um, how to have juicy, productive, exciting, mm -hmm. interesting, loving group process. Mm -hmm. uh, and sh the woman who developed that, Tree Bresson, uh, mm -hmm. actually with tremendous collaboration from lots of other people, uh, mm -hmm. created the idea of having these cards and designing the cards with a, a picture, a little 50 word statement, uh, mm. and uh, connected patterns, <clears throat> uh, you know, related patterns. And so I was going to model my pattern language after that. And mm -hmm. I did, uh, uh, but you have to have that, the, the, the connected, the connect, and, and because it's on a card, I mean, there's infinite connections between patterns and a pattern mm -hmm. language, but you can only put like seven of them on a card. Mm -hmm. So I made this big chart pad. Mm -hmm. you know, given the nature of this call, I think I will see if I, Oh yeah, here it goes, I think. <laughs> right. There's this chart pad. I'm a paper guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. it has all awesome. the 70 by 70, all the patterns across the top, all the patterns down the side. Mm -hmm. So I go across marking them with different levels of how related I think they are mm -hmm. for several days. And, mm -hmm. and then I couldn't have 10, I couldn't have three. I had to make sure there were seven in each row that had the top ranking. And then it mm -hmm. occurred to me, I should, mm -hmm. I should see what, how many times each of them was listed mm -hmm. as a related pattern. Mm -hmm. So I added up the columns mm -hmm. instead of the rows. Mm -hmm. And I discovered two of them stood out way beyond all the others. Mm -hmm. they had like 24 and 26 connections. The next lowest was like 14. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were the uh, um, using diversity and disturbance creatively mm -hmm. and well-utilized life energy. Mm -hmm. And I thought mm -hmm. that was really interesting until later on, several months later, I realized they're intimately related. Mm -hmm. That if you invite life energy into a space, use it, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. will get diversity and disturbance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So needing to be able to use that creatively is a powerful skill. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I see, and that's fundamental to what's going on in this, uh, in the wise democracy work is how do we collectively mm -hmm. utilize primarily diversity and disturbance because mm -hmm. they have lessons. And I recognized that as going on mm -hmm. in the Taiwan and in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the, the software and it's in Mickey's mm -hmm. thing. It's in dynamic facilitation. It's like, these are the, mm -hmm. the master practices for doing that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, you've probably read everything on the Wise Democracy Pattern Language website, but mm, you know, not, not yet, maybe one fits, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> you yeah. probably notice each pattern, although they're presented mm -hmm. in many different ways, each pattern has its own page. Mm -hmm. uh, the video that is on the page is because the guy that was working with me, uh, Martin Rausch, who one day just called me and said, hey, would you like to... Uh, would you like, like some help developing a pattern language on wise democracy? <laughs> and I was off and running instantly with that request. And he was absolutely essential to getting that out of me. It would have taken me five, 10 years to do it by myself. But after I wrote, I wrote uh, these little, you know, 50 word descriptions, which tree mm -hmm. calls the heart of the pattern. Mm -hmm. And then Martin, while we're on zoom, he's in Switzerland. <laughs> Martin says, why did you describe it that way? Mm. And I talked about why I described it that way, and he recorded it on Zoom, and that's the video that's on the pages. And then he transcribed, somebody else who transcribes things, he transcribed mm. the video, what I said in the video, and then I edited the transcriptions, and that's the big essay that's on each one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I gave him this part of my story, you know, he, I, he asked me what picture, what kind of picture would be good for each pattern. And so I gave mm -hmm. him some words to describe what kind of picture. He went mm -hmm. and got pictures. Mm -hmm. And after he'd gotten the picture for all the patterns, he had me go through and rate the pictures on a scale of zero to 10. Mm -hmm. And then any picture that had less than a five or mm -hmm. five or less, he found another picture mm -hmm. that everything had more than five on it which is just like that's the quality of the site all the, the website layout you compare that site to the co-intelligence institute site mm -hmm. and you're in a different ball game mm -hmm. you know <laughs> i don't know how you do all this stuff but you do <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah well i just added to the picture where you utilize life energy um, just by so, taking a screenshot um, of us talking. And I so, want to do, I want to mm. place your stuff somewhere in the pattern language, but I'm going to have to <laughs> really do some digestion because mm -hmm. it, is, it is a different order of thing mm -hmm. than the other examples and resources that I've put in here. Mm -hmm. Plus, I would probably... If I do a version two, which I'd like to do sometime this year, mm -hmm. it'll be it'll be influential in mm -hmm. I don't know, it's a funny way my mind works the way it works and I'm seventy one mm -hmm. years old and I'm go mm -hmm. okay, I can it's worked enough that I can recognize sort of what mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. But I don't operate in that world natively. Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm you. You are you fascinate me partly because you're an obvious native. <laughs> you live you live in this different yeah. world that I I understand aspects of, but mm -hmm. and intuit. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of my work mm -hmm. intuitively, and then translating mm -hmm. into ideas and words and stuff. Mm -hmm. The intuitions are fundamental, and I recognize that's part of when I met mm -hmm. Ruth Nora. Mm -hmm. It was. I saw somebody who recognized the deepest levels of co-intelligence that mm. hardly anybody else I work with recognizes. They're operating at a different level. But mm -hmm. she did something totally different with it than I did. Mm -hmm. It fascinated me. Mm -hmm. And I come here and I find I didn't recognize, I didn't recognize you and the V Taiwan mm -hmm. stuff on its own terms until this mm -hmm. conversation started. I had to mm -hmm. look the lens of citizen deliberative councils and stuff like that and trying to get policies and blah, blah, blah. 
and this, mm-hmm. how separate that was from open space. You know, mm-hmm. there is the creation of policies, and then there is self-organization activity, mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. sort of they're both now mm-hmm. woven mm-hmm. together in mm-hmm. seamlessly, and and on top of that. It's fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't yeah. tend to put the fun part in. You put it mm-hmm. right in the middle. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, my I I had three chapters on why the Tao democracy was Taoistic at the end of the book, mm-hmm. but Rosa chopped the book. She she got me to write it, and then she said it's too long, <laughs> and you have to you have to cut it cut out two thirds of it. Okay. So. There's only a couple of references to Dao Te Ching mm-hmm. in there, but the key mm-hmm. one is the, you know, the leader leads well when the people say they did it themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the idea of action and no action, I don't think, I may have lots of philosophy about what that means, mm-hmm. but I have not seen anybody mm-hmm. who comes close to mm-hmm. doing that the way you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoa, has this guy got that down? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, so. Yeah, um, I, I think it's, um, it's interesting um, to, to go through the, the cards. Um, I, I was a uh, player of a card game called uh, Magic the Gathering. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's, it was very popular among um, teenagers here. Um, back in 1997 or something, maybe eight. Um, and that's I live in a I co-op learned. house with young people, and they every now and then pull out the magic. That's right. That's right. And that's how that's how I learned English. So, so my my first vocabularies of English are very complex things, <laughs> like abeyance, um, or <laughs> right, like like um, like things that people won't usually use, but because there's so many magic cards. Uh, annihilation, right? They they have to find new um, synonyms uh, for the same uh, spell. So so my my vocabulary is very weird, um, and I started learning English. Um, but 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 I, I like the the pictures, and and how um, they convey a contextual uh, mm-hmm. thing on on which these very complex words can be used, because otherwise they're just complex words, right? Um, the, the the picture really captures the um, context, the association possibility uh, of, of the terms. So, so I, I really like the way the WBPL, uh, the West Democracy um, side, is organized. I think it's intuitively, um, it's not sequential in the way that it asks people to apply it as a toolkit. But, but of course, you, if you have a strong need to pull something useful, you can do that too. But, but the website is not um, pressuring. Uh, the viewer to, to, to do this. And, and I, I tend to think the same of, of Taiwan, but the thing with um, international media is that they, they have a narrative. Uh, Vitaiwan is usually just one section or one paragraph or one uh, part of the larger narrative. So necessarily they extract the one example that fits the narrative and, and run with it, which, which we're, we're okay too. I mean, we, we relinquish copyright for this very purpose, right? Anyone can say they did it themselves and I, we won't sue them. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, the, the core logic of, of, of Gov0, right? It's not just you can take any government website and change the O to a zero uh, to get a shadow government, but, but also it, it echoes the idea of the, the creative commons zero, which is an explicit waiver of, of copyright, including attribution right and personal right. That is to I say had, people had, can I, see. I ran across somebody who, I was yeah. I stumbled on an article of mine that wasn't on any of my websites, and it was on this consultant's website with his name as the author. And mm-hmm. I went, wow, <laughs> he's carrying my words on. That's great. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're all just, you know, vehicles uh yeah that the, the patterns inhabit so so um ownership is a silly idea um and so any, anyway so so what i'm trying to to associate to is um maybe it is um maybe it is not 
so much that the, the space um, is essential in, in connecting life energy towards diversity. Um, I try to think space as, because you see, when, when space um, are understood in uh, a um, topological way, um, people, people usually think space is something that has a, like agora, right? It has boundary, it has um, the space where the space is in, uh, it has a certain notion of, of dimensionality, like Taipei is part of Taiwan and so on. Um, and now that, um, and speaking as a, a young migrant to the internet, um, the, the internet is having its own logic, right? It's like people who feel the same way in all those three spaces, that they form a tribe uh, and try to recruit more people um, into this tribe, which forms a, a link graph that is related because the, the space still provides safety, security, food, bandwidth um, to the link graph. But the link graph also um, appropriates resources and try to create spaces even when they are none, like through Occupy, uh, which essentially says we want the space to carry the logic of our network. Um, and, and so I think it is in the dynamic exchange between those the link graph and the space graph um, that these diversities um, are organized creatively. Um, and there's a, a mathematical part of this language based on category theory, but this is how my mind sees the um, connections and life energy. Something tells me that uh, Nora will understand that better than mm -hmm. I will. She mm -hmm. has she has a list of about 15 different scientific principles or theories that you need to understand before you can name what's called a station in her warm data labs. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And I go, this is, un this is unnecessarily <laughs> complexifying it, but I don't know, you know? And mm -hmm. then and, uh, Bertrand Russell's categories, levels of categories mm -hmm. is one yeah. of her things. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, space to me doesn't necessarily have boundaries, and mm -hmm. there's, yeah, space is, space. again, it's one of those things I have an intuition for, and the words don't, a bounded space is a specific kind of space, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but having, it's like a realm, the word realm I use a lot, one uh, I have a colleague, I have lots of colleagues, I have a colleague who used to be a Christian fundamentalist minister mm -hmm. who passed out anti-evolution tracts, mm -hmm. and then he got converted to the, story, the science-based story of evolution as a sacred, our sacred, um, you know, from the formation creation story. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the Big Bang till now, and he mm -hmm. totally reframed Christianity mm -hmm. in science-based evolutionary terms. So God mm -hmm. is reality, and facts are God's native tongue, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Got to get right with reality, get right with God, mm -hmm. and make consequences. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's really interesting. And he wrote a book called "Thank God for Evolution." And he has mm -hmm. a website, thankgodforevolution.com. His name is mm -hmm. Michael Dowd. and mm -hmm. I became a close colleague of his for several years. And became finally mm -hmm. unsatisfied with his work where it was limited by not having enough about uh, activism. Mm. Uh, and to me, one of the language of people like Michael Dowd is that we are evolution becoming conscious of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the universe looking at itself through telescopes, all these sort of inversions. Uh, and if, if we are evolution becoming conscious of itself, then all our efforts to change conditions in the world mm -hmm. are directly tied back to the Big Bang. I mean, all this whole thrust of evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that the great grandmama of all 
activism is the evolutionary process and we better mm -hmm. learn from great grandmama and not organize you know, not ignore her so that's my reflections on evolutionary activism book uh is what would it mean to try to learn from evolution and not just be evolutionary agents but mm -hmm. take on that identity of being being the evolutionary process what does that mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things when I was studying evolution, which connects back to the space thing, mm -hmm. and like the invention of video games mm -hmm. created a realm within which evolution happens. Mm -hmm. You know, the creation mm -hmm. of language cr creates a realm. It's like these branching off. We're, we're really good at creating new realms for evolution to unfold mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily physical these are virtual spaces language mm -hmm. is a virtual space mm -hmm. you know and then new varieties you know we go intelligence the new words like a new species has slowly sh shown up <laughs> mm -hmm. the ecosystem of language you know uh, and that that's another kind of space mm -hmm. uh and that thing that I mentioned earlier with when Mickey was on of uh, questions. And there's a whole page on the Cointelligence Institute website if you want to mm -hmm. poke in it and instantly mm -hmm. see it with a bunch of links mm -hmm. about questions. Mm -hmm. And the idea that questions have power mm -hmm. and questions can have linear power or nonlinear power in the sense of questions that open space mm -hmm. where you, you're directing attention, but you're directing it to a space, not a point. Mm -hmm. Questions that have answers, you know, what's four times four is directing you to a point. But like the World Cafe people, you're familiar with World Cafe? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's Very another one of the powerful nonlinear processes. Mm -hmm. And they are masters. I have a list of people, Quakers and Fran Peavy and, you know, the World, mm -hmm. Cafe. World Cafe people are brilliant. And one of my favorite, mm -hmm. what I call zipper questions Mm -hmm. you, you can put all sorts of things into it. It's like, mm -hmm. what could this conversation also be? Mm -hmm. you know, what could be Taiwan also be? Mm -hmm. What could governance also be? <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. so just that uh, you plug in different things and it's, it takes you, they did it, they made that first with a school that was having all these problems. Mm -hmm. and instead of addressing the problems, they had them do a world cafe on what could this school also be? You know, it's like boing, you know, <laughs> you're outside of the whole frame of reference instantly, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And that brings me to another piece, which I, you probably, you probably already read my blog post on, uh, <laughs> I'm predicting now how you behave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're so predictable. Mm -hmm. You've already done everything. <laughs> 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 or, or, or about to, or about to. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the uh, network governance, mm -hmm. uh, multi-sector, multi-stakeholder, multi-scale networks collaborating mm -hmm. is an emerging form of governance. And mm -hmm. I realize this overlaps totally with your stuff. Mm -hmm. You are practicing it in a very dynamic way. Mm -hmm. uh, but... This Tracy Kunkler is a is a um, a uh, um, consultant. Yes, that's the MS3 stuff. Tracy mm -hmm. Kunkler is a consultant, um, largely with networks that are involved with food systems in Appalachia. Mm -hmm. And she was noting, she wrote a little blog post noting that she was seeing she was seeing uh, like the the farmers have their networks, and the uh, and consumers and groceries have their networks, and the uh, government regulators have their networks, and they were all working together to evolve food systems across boundaries of states, you know. And she was going, "This is an emerging form of governance." And mm -hmm. several weeks later. Another colleague, Nancy White. Do you know Nancy White? 
know, she's an cool. online yeah. she's an online facilitator and does graphic yeah. facilitation online. Yeah, I, I think I, I heard of the name, but not yeah, not intimately. She, she referred me to a guy named Steve Waddell, mm-hmm. who had been working for years and written several books on it, and he was noting that the the uh, seventeen sustainable development goals of the United Nations, every one of them is gathering around it multi-sector, multi-stakeholder, multi-scale networks that Mm -hmm. are trying to collaborate. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily know how to do that. And Mm -hmm. sometimes they're, you know, big players like multinational corporations or government people Mm -hmm. will try to take over and try and get everybody else to do what they want. And Mm -hmm. other ones are much more peer-based and but that's sort of new. The collab, that level of collaboration across that level of difference, is new, mm-hmm. and so there's a lot of exploration there. Mm-hmm. And that that's happening. There's hundreds of these happening all over the world. Mm-hmm. And the idea of this idea, we ended up talking. I connected up Tracy and Steve, and we ended up talking like every week on Zoom mm-hmm. for months and then we did a, mm-hmm. a session at a at a conference on democratic innovations which out of 200 people at the conference seven people came to our session <laughs> well <laughs> it's a, it allows for a deeper conversation yes but they those mm-hmm. seven people when asked what are you observing and what's needed they say it's a struggle trying to work together and mm-hmm. i'm thinking we have such incredible tools to work together if that's your problem we can, there's a match made in heaven here. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. out of all that stuff is emerging a thing currently ENGI, uh, mm-hmm. emerging network governance initiative. Mm-hmm. That Tracy, who is a very good organizer, uh, Steve is supporting Tracy to leave some of her consulting to uh, ENGI, emerging network. ENGI, okay. And, uh, mm-hmm. Network governance. Uh, okay. Yeah. And Steve uh, Tracy has. Uh, we're going through very step by step kinds of organizing, uh, which I don't know how to do. I'm sort of along mm-hmm. the ride. Uh, mm-hmm. And we just did. Have you ever heard of Three Horizons practice? Three her- Three Horizons. Three Horizons. For, Three Horizons for, is the way things are now is Horizon 1 and the things you don't like about it. The way a, McKinsey idea. Is it hmm? like a, a idea. Um, it, it looks it's like, a practice. like this. Like this. Mm-hmm. No. Like, no. No. So it's not there. Okay. I can't. It's, there's a, there, is a, there is a visual, but it's a, the first Horizon there are three curves. Well, first horizon is a curve that starts high and goes a little higher and then goes down. This is the way things are is going to die off. So mm-hmm. that's the, and the second horizon goes up over it, overlaps the first. Well, as it's going mm-hmm. down, the second horizon, which is things you're doing to change things, it rises mm-hmm. up and then sort of levels off. And horizon mm-hmm. three rises from sort of the middle and goes way up. That's, mm-hmm. the, that's the world that you want. Okay. So there are exercises. I mean, I could take you to an illustration. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did, they do a whiteboard of an online whiteboard with online um, post-it notes. Mm-hmm. They ask us questions like, what is it about the way governance is now that you can't stand? And we all wrote our answers to those. For question mm-hmm. for Horizon One and Horizon Two is or right with those little Horizon Three next. Like, what's the world look like that you want? If it if you really achieved your purposes, what would it look like? And so we mm-hmm. wrote our answers to that kind of thing. And then what needs mm-hmm. to happen for that to happen? You know, what are existing things and and uh, things that need to be initiated, etc. And that's the Horizon Two. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's more. Mm-hmm. And right. and. Uh, yeah, I, should. I don't have this. <laughs> uh, okay. and so they, then they put, they reduced our answers to post-it notes that they mm-hmm. put on the horizon charts. Mm-hmm. First, first, they put, first they put them all in a big circle 
uh, or big um, uh, rectangle, and we had mm -hmm. to collectively sort them into groups mm -hmm. for our little answers. Mm -hmm. And then we had one, and that was very frustrating because the <laughs> post-it notes kept flying out of the group you were trying to collect them into because somebody else moved mm -hmm. them. And then the... Uh, once we settled on the clusters, then we had to agree collectively on Zoom which, what to name the clusters. Mm -hmm. uh, and all that was laid on the three horizons. And then there's another level of abstraction where the clusters are pulled out and laid along mm -hmm. the three horizons. And, feedback, and then the clusters are clustered. Mm -hmm. The cluster names are clustered and feedback loops are drawn between these different dimensions of each of these things showing how mm -hmm. they support each other, block each other, whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they said, then that's your narrative. That's the narrative of what your group is trying to do is what's that thing over time. And you need mm -hmm. to use that to create texts or videos or whatever to tell people about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a really interesting exercise. We're sort of, it took months of every other week meetings to do that and that's sort of where stage we're at uh and we're in the process and there's a group a small group that has been uh, researching case studies you know different different networks that are working together uh in specific places doing specific things uh, mm -hmm. and we'll be looking for money blah 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 but it's just another mm -hmm. fact that these networks are trying to work together and they're working on real world problems and, and they're cross sector. You know, it's like, once again, I look at your stuff and go, that's a manifestation of this in a very different way. Mm -hmm. than we've been envisioning it, mm -hmm. uh, but the exactly the same energy, or you can frame it in those terms. I mean, it's mm -hmm. all sorts of <clears throat> how do we collectively co-intelligently wisely mm -hmm do our work together on the ground to get stuff to happen and mm -hmm. they're doing a variation of it so there's like mm -hmm. a number of things i'm involved in mm -hmm. where this is another form of that that has things mm -hmm. to say big time you know because mm -hmm. whenever we have linear things we're trying to do it's going to take too much time mm -hmm. it's got to be non-linear and i that's the the uh impulse that I bring, which is, has probably too much linearity and seriousness for you, but it's like, <laughs> you're onto something. Actually, you're not on mm -hmm. it, you're in it. You're into something. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. Right and right I want... Here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, in terms of the goal, the goal. Yeah. yeah, well, I... The, you, there was a big thing with tons of money attached to it to, on govern, global governance. Did you run across that thing, a contest for uh, yeah. global governance that had a um, million dollars guaranteed to the winner of the thing? Yes, uh, I, I, I've heard of it, yeah. I couldn't, I go, I, I can't think in those terms, but, and I know, I have zero, you're the, we're one of the few truly international cross-cultural engagements I've had. I'm so mm -hmm. American, Western, white guy, mm -hmm. white guy kind of mm -hmm. sympathetic. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, the global governance challenge yeah. or something. Right, like right, that. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, when I looked at your stuff and all the, all the things I wrote in that 10 page thing, which I'm not embarrassed mm -hmm. about it was, you know, it was my adolescence, the developmental stage. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that there's, there's something really important about what you're doing. And I'm not even sure I'm built to recognize it, partly because of your relaxed, fun center of gravity, which is not, I mean, I enjoy having fun, but fun is mm -hmm. not the center and I've mm -hmm. had to work because other people, like the exuberance card, you know, I, when I was doing my evolutionary stuff, mm -hmm. I actually have on my, my wall in front of me, I had to sort of force myself to think about life energy, the centrality of life energy 
And what is the evolutionary process through which exuberance mm. be in all of its manifestations? What's this mm -hmm. stick with natural selection? If you don't have new exuberance as the core thing that's happening, but you just stick with natural selection, how mm -hmm. did exuberance, exuberance is wasteful, you know? So like, mm -hmm. I'm going, how did it survive? It's like all the research on how collaboration came to be when it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I have to work at that part of it. There are mm -hmm. other people who feel that kind of fun life energy, the arts and all that, mm -hmm. needs to be central. It is central. Mm -hmm. And most of the manifestations that I see of that, I see being used in sort of maintaining privilege. Mm -hmm. Sort of like we're going to be having fun and happy in our conference and doing all these enjoyable things. And I go, hey, there's business to get down to. Mm -hmm. and in the meantime, people are dying and things are mm -hmm. being destroyed. So what the fuck? And it feels like we're here to enjoy ourselves energy rather than there's something fundamental and core about it. And mm -hmm. I bump into yours mm -hmm. and it is fundamental and core. I recognize mm -hmm. that totally in who mm -hmm. you are and how you describe what's happening. And I go, mm -hmm. what this is, I don't know. Theoretically, I know exactly what it is, but in a mm -hmm. gut sense, I don't have it. So when I go, how do we spread this? How mm -hmm. does this, it's not even spread. How does this, it's a dandelion, you know, how does this take seed? Mm -hmm. discover where is the place to drop down and sprout and mm -hmm. flourish because it's got to be that kind of energy it's not a there's things to do to facilitate it to catalyze it whatever but it's not a tree planting operation <laughs> mm. it's, there's something far more organic and i don't know what it is and i hope i hope this conversation and video at least you know, as it bumps into people who go, oh, yeah, I know what he's talking about. Tom doesn't know his ass mm -hmm. all on the ground, you know, that maybe this will help that get planted somewhere. But I'm, once again, I had, with somathesy, I had to do a major turn my head around to center myself in her world. And mm -hmm. I'm feeling a similar kind of, I need to, I need to absorb this. I need to watch this video five or 10 times and absorb the energy and become a different person to be able to see through the eyes that you see through, which I can't ever do because I'm not living in the world that you are with the history you have, but I need to, since this mm -hmm. is my life passion, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need to figure out how to take, take on this thing that you have, you have created and are living in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, be before I even know I will do any public policy work, um, I, I gave this, this talk um, about, it's called uh, Open Source Enlightenment. Um, and it's not even my talk. Uh, it's one of my dear friends, um, Alison Randall, uh, who's president of the Open Source Initiative, uh, the, the bunch of people who, who did this open source thing. Um, by convincing people like um, the old Netscape or now Microsoft and Google and everyone to uh, partially or completely abandon their copyrights so people can have fun together. Uh, and so, so we had to, to make this whole um, culture uh, for it. And, and so she, she went to Taipei and gave a talk. Uh, and I did a real-time transcription, and then I added some more pictures, and it turned to a different talk. Um, and and so, yeah, one of the slides or the cards I have is is um, optimizing for fun. And uh, what a but, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think it's a it's a more uh, more fun than the person jumping <laughs> no here. Yeah, the, the, the gravity. Is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's on Flickr, so so I actually link back to the Flickr, which um, again use Creative Commons. Um, the photo the graphic shares her, her copyright. Um, yeah, but but the the fine print there is a fine print um, to to this picture, right? You need a stable support. You need a safe space. You need uh, a priori unconstrained 
uh, of the activities. And uh, finally, you need to uh, um, accepting, be accepting of new ways of looking at the world. It can't just be reinforcing the status quo, um, which would be privilege as you um, describe it. So the, I think there's, there's um, a world of abundance that programmers take for granted in the past decade or so, because they really cost nothing to copy um, a web page. Uh, and the abundance is felt strongly because um, the software are developed in a way, and we have a word for that, um, it's called CRDT, um, and it stands for the mathematical concept of a conflict-free, replicated, or replicable, replicated uh, data, uh, type. So this, what this means mathematically is that whatever I do in my open source work, I can feel comfortable to let other people to take to new directions, but uh, it will cost us almost nothing to merge our respective contributions into something new. And historically, this part of the diamond is very expensive. Um, it's expensive, not in the money sense, but in the, you have to have a designated listener that's on par of the two forks um, sense. If the facilitator has to understand the language and if the system's fork diverge too much, there is a limit of what a facilitator can do. Uh, but by using the data structures, the ways of working that there is a guarantee of healing themselves when merging. Um, <laughs> millions of people can type on the same Google Doc. Um, thousands of people can edit the same spreadsheet and so on. And I guess it's just the space, the automated space itself uh, works as a facilitator. So, um, and this gives the hallucination of other data types are also conflict free, but they are not. Right, which is why we have wicked problems. So I think there is this naive, fundamental lesson of fun that uh, my generation of open source programmers are bringing into the, the world of nonviolent communication on public matters and just gradually learning um, the methodologies of dealing with the tangible world, uh, but still keeping the, the inherent funness of the the conflict-free, um, intangible word. I think that's the succinct way of saying it. I don't think mathematically. I have very yeah. low mathematical aptitudes. No, it's good. So you can think uh, in this picture. Yeah. But I can, it's an interesting, it's something to meditate on. Yeah, I can think of that picture easily. Yeah. Do you know, do you know Swami Beyondananda? Swami, no. <laughs> When you said fundamentally, and he does that. He says, put the fun back in the fundamental and driving your own karma. He's a master of puns. He's, a, mm -hmm. he's not a real Swami. Uh, mm -hmm. he dresses, he's, a, he's a comedian, a socially conscious, spiritually aware comedian. Uh, mm -hmm. Dresses up as a Swami and does little punny filled. Swami Beyond mm -hmm. the Panda, Steve Behrman. Uh, I just, he just did an interview with me mm -hmm. uh, last week. But... Uh, if you enjoy puns, uh, he says there's a, a great uprising that's needed. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> One of his frequently used, you know, we got to wise up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway. Right. So, yeah, we, we got to wise up. I think this is great. <laughs> I'll be using this <laughs> word. <laughs> yeah. well, you go, go, go look, him, look him up. Uh, he's okay. beyond Ananda, uh, mm -hmm. and he has lots of stuff on his websites that have you can just mm -hmm. absorb and use. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome! I'll do just that. So, um, yeah, I, I do feel wise that uh, <laughs> in this conversation. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, I'm I. I think by April, I will have 
I will have a little more orientation and be able to uh, be able to talk. Well, I don't know. I don't know what will happen by April. I really enjoyed the conversation. I want to uh, mm-hmm. want to stay in touch, and mm-hmm. I feel it's a rare feeling to feel mm-hmm. over my head mm-hmm. you know, that I am. I tend to be thinking and perceiving in, in realms I don't have a lot of company in. And here I'm going, whoa, who is this? I am mm. I step up. <laughs> so I, mm-hmm. I, am, uh, I am intrigued. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm happy, as I said in email, to, to catch up exactly one week from now or two weeks from now if you're time uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to figure out. I keep adding layers of activity. Mm-hmm. I got five and a half hours sleep last night and four hours of sleep the previous nights. Oh, wow. And it's mm-hmm. not healthy for me. I can feel it. No. But I'm mm-hmm. stacking initiatives on top of initiatives, all of which are compelling, and each one is more powerful than the last. Mm-hmm. And I don't yet know how to manage that lifestyle wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, and. You're one of the big, <laughs> one of the big uh, focuses of that lately. Uh, trying to absorb mm-hmm. all this material. Now I look back at all the work I put into it, and I'm going, that was playing in the wrong playing field. But it did generate stuff we could talk about. Mm-hmm. But I would, I, I would hunger more connection next week. But I need to find out where I'm going to be next week, and I need to mm-hmm. digest my world. And I want to share this with a number of other people to help me digest it who are mm-hmm. who colleagues there. So their mouths can drop and go, oh, God, what? what's mm-hmm. this? Yeah. Um, so for their benefit, I'm going to answer these two questions very quickly. <laughs> which, um, which are the privacy assurances and do I have people actively looking for oh. ways to hack the system? Uh, because we do. Uh, we, we pay a lot uh, to white hat hackers um, out of taxpayer money to attack the underlying system, the sandstorm system. Uh, and uh, we do uh, publish vulnerabilities, uh, but only when the upstream community fixes it within a reasonable time frame. It's called responsible disclosure. Um, but we hire really the very best white, white hat hackers to make sure that uh, it is cybersecurity wise safe because otherwise people can just manufacture um, consent that there isn't. Right? Um, and um, POTUS used to be proprietary software. Uh, and we again convinced and worked with Colin and the team to make it free software uh, with the condition that anyone deploying it anywhere who make change to it has also to share its changes, not just to the original team, but to anyone using the modified system, the users. Mm-hmm. It's, it's called strong copyleft right, uh, right. For, for, yeah, for that reason. Um, and we believe strongly in that, and we believe in community or um, stakeholder governance of the common technology of POLIS. And that is, in fact, the thing that I'm fine to Seattle to talk to Colin about. Uh, how to transition from a um, Mm -hmm. benevolent dictator, as is usually the case for open source projects when they're small, to a multi-stakeholder governing system, which is most open source projects go when they become mature. And so this is um, actually what I'm trying to see out here for. And finally, for this question, if someone has unlimited resources, um, how would they go about it? If someone has unlimited resources, they can do everything, right? They, they can go all the ways in all the different ways. So I try not to imagine too much. Um, but as long as they still let us have some fun, I'm sure we can replicate this model. <laughs> Maybe not called V Taiwan, but some other name. Uh, right? As long as there's like thinking, energy. I mean, part of, yeah. part of the situation yeah. in the US, particularly, but globally, is there are some unbelievably wealthy people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I think it's like in the United States, like three people now who own 
who have a mm-hmm. that wealth as big as the bottom half of the society. It's just like mm-hmm. that level of wealth. And I've been walk, tracking some of the things that are being done with that mm-hmm. money, which are changing the dynamics of society in order to generate more wealth, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. what happens when power concentrates like that. Uh, yeah. So that's why I asked, that's the motivation behind the question. Yeah. Like there's a way in which this is, Mm-hmm. This is growing in a totally different way that might not mm-hmm. even be seen or whatever, but it's mm-hmm. uh, right. So know. it's most about concentration of wealth. <laughs> yeah. Um, back when we were doing uh, open source before it was a thing, um, there is this rallying cry that says Bill Gates may be the most wealthy person in the world, but he can't buy the quality of Windows operating system. Um, and, and I think it is still true. Um, wealth can, can only buy things that are known. Uh, and for the true unknowns, um, you can't, like Bill Gates used to say that, you know, his mission was a place, uh, a desktop, personal computer on everyone's desktop. And it's a noble mission, actually. But um, it's, it's like, the old government systems that says they're working for the people, right? Um, and, and with all these models, what we're trying to say is that we're working with the people. We, we are the people, right? So with, not for. Uh, and there are things like Linux um, that can only be built when you work with people. Uh, they can't ever be built by things that are top down or working for the people. Uh, and it's it's fundamental, and and I think wealth plays relatively small, little factor when when you're in realms like um, this one. But of course, with wealth, people can try to restrict the solution space. Mm-hmm. But I'm just very happy Bill Gates is not doing that. He is actually doing social entrepreneurship and <laughs> philanthropy pretty effectively. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we shall see. Which is, we are in the mystery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I should probably, I think I mm. think I have got, m- I mm. started with, the, it's like the, the intentions, mm. I got my intentions satisfied mm-hmm. or addressed and mm. uh, in ways that I did not anticipate. Mm. Now I have to digest my experience and mm-hmm. I, there's a way in which when I try to think what my biggest use was, I have a version of Mickey's, of, uh, Mickey's question mm-hmm. uh, in terms of how could we be of service because there's a, mm-hmm. a way in which I sense you carrying the sensibilities that I've had in um, in remarkable new ways that if they manifested well mm-hmm. would be way beyond any of the things I've been thinking in mm-hmm. terms of what kind of impact I wanted to have in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I had a heart attack last year and as they were wheeling me into the emergency room, I was mm-hmm. thinking, thank God I got the pattern language done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's sort of, this is a legacy project and there's a way mm-hmm. If there was anything that I could do or say that would um, enhance the ability of this uh, energy that you're working with, mm-hmm. I don't know exactly how to label it, but uh, mm-hmm. enhance its ability to um, to go forth and multiply, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I would feel that was an far more valuable legacy than Mm -hmm. anything I could create out of my own experience as a, there's a contribute to something that is bigger than anything I've ever thought about Mm -hmm. that I would like to do. So Mm -hmm. if you bump into anything like that, let me know. Mm -hmm. And we'll just keep talking and doing whatever the heck we're going to be doing. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, And for the time being, I think what we both can do is to release this video to the public on the internet uh, under no copyright whatsoever, if you're okay with that. Oh, uh, sure. And I don't it, copyright any of my yeah, stuff, really. And, and go forth and uh, exponentiate, whatever. Yeah. 
And there, ideally, there would be a space, which I don't know how to create, mm-hmm. for talking about this, to, you know, for connecting up for people who look at the video and go, whoa, I mm-hmm. have questions. I want to talk mm-hmm. to other people about it. I want to generate more videos of conversations mm-hmm. about whatever so uh-huh. that it has a chance to replicate in whatever forky ways uh, want to happen. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm OTT. Um, I'm OTT on Twitter, and so, <laughs> and that that's how you found me, right? or your friend did. Uh, so, so we can we can carry on the conversation on, on Twitter, and I think there's multiple online spaces where people care a lot about this thing. Lumio actually is one of the prominent places um and so yeah we can connect people who jump in and do who those um you know, really, uh, so you'll time, have so. to nurse me along on that because i'm not familiar with the vast majority of you know platform mm-hmm. you use uh, mm-hmm. and if you want to no it's it, it's good set something we can up just, and invite me yeah. in and i'll see what i can yeah, do exactly exactly yeah i'll I'll invite you to the uh, GovZero um, Slack, and it needs some handholding, uh, but I think yeah. it's <laughs> surmountable. Uh, and so, and that's that's I think the the first step. And we'll meet there and figure out something. There's change agents all over the world um, thinking about more or less the the same uh, dimensions as we do. Yeah. Okay, so maybe mm-hmm. some of the Next things might be introductions, you introducing me into some of the mm-hmm. platforms mm-hmm. so I can mm-hmm. function in that world with mm-hmm. you. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I went, I think it was the Slack that I went to when I was first trying to figure out how to mm-hmm. connect up with you. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't make head or tail of it. And it was only partly, it was only a quarter mm-hmm. of the fact that it was mostly in Chinese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, right, there's I couldn't a, figure there, out what it was. That right. Was there, there's a there's a English channel. There's an English channel. So um, the V Taiwan extended network. Uh, we are on the V network channel. There's many so other let channels. So you know, I'm not getting anything in my screen when you've done you're writing things. Okay. Not showing up in my screen. Okay, maybe I need to reconnect. Oops, there's a sudden that just showed up. Okay, no, it's just fine because um, we're we're recording this whole thing. Yes. Uh, locally as well. So we'll, I know we'll... how to use email really well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so do you know how to upload a Zoom recording and share it to me? I have, I have my, uh, uh, it's on my cloud account. Okay, Zoom. that's great. So I can send that's you great. a link to it and you can do what you want with it. Yeah, and I can merge it uh, with the local higher quality recording of this okay. whiteboard thing. Yeah. All righty. Okay. So you sleep on it. Um, <laughs> have a good sleep. <laughs> I'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. And, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. It's, it's been, been very good talking to you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Bye.